Dogs of Mississippi. Not too bad, not too humid for Aaron Andrews down on the sidelines. Feeling pretty good, Chris. Well, hey, over the years, Steve Spurrier has taken on some pretty tough opponents. But the internet? Now, how about this? During early fall scrimmages, Spurrier opened up the gates for the fans. He wanted them to get ready, get the buzz on. He also wanted his players to be exposed to the, no the noise. But what he quickly found out is fans were posting his formations, his plays, who was starting, what injuries, all over the internet and message boards. And guys, while we know this happens for teams everywhere, the all ball wanted nothing to do with it. He closed the gates and said those internet boys ruined it for everyone. And guys, if you're keeping score, Spurrier won, internet nothing. Aaron, there's so much passion at South Carolina and everywhere. You better believe fans are looking at every detail of every practice and putting it on the internet. you got to live with that. The internet boys, he's got the glasses <laughs> out tonight. The old ball coach fired up, ready to go tonight. And Sylvester Crew, we mentioned the 6-16 six and 16 record. He's won both of his openers. But now that he's gotten the guys that he recruited, this is his team, and the expectations are much higher. Worth winning with him, the staff, the players, and, of course, the fans here. South Carolina won the toss, and they'll receive wearing the black jerseys. That'll be the new home look for the Gamecocks this year, but because Mississippi State's wearing the home white with the Gamecocks in black. It's Carlos Thomas deep to receive the kick. And despite the new rule, which has reduced the size of the kicking tee from two inches down to one inches to cut down on touchbacks, we get a touchback to start the game. Here's the impact players in that Gamecock offense. Well, it, we talked about it, Chris, in the open. This is going to be an opportunity to see some talent with Blake Mitchell, Sidney Rice when it comes to the passing game. I'm excited to see Corey Boyd come back into the lineup for the Gamecocks. He sat out last year for uh, breaking some rules within the school. He's now back, and along with he and Mike Davis, keep an eye on two talented backs for the Gamecocks. It'll be Mike Davis behind Mitchell to start this game. The sophomore who led his team in rushing as a true freshman. The first play for the ball coach in 2006. It'll be a pass. Mitchell back. Pretty good protection. Now he flips it over the middle. Intercepted. Intercepted by Quinton Culberson, the middle linebacker. A disastrous start for Mitchell and the Gamecocks in 2006, and Culberson, a very quick linebacker, a former quarter in his safety. Boy, Mississippi State wanted to get off to a good start. It's a new season. It's a fresh start. They talked about optimism yesterday in our meetings. What a better way. Coverage, great coverage downfield. But Culberson, a man who has played corner and safety, he's lined up in Mike Linebacker for the second year now this year, comes up with a pick to give the Bulldogs great field position here early. And Mike Hennig under center. Play action. He's not one of the more mobile quarterbacks, and he gets rocked by Jasper Brinkley, one of the Brinkley twins, Juco transfers. Jasper wants out after the big collision with Hennig. He's uh, favoring his right shoulder. Hennig looks okay. I'm glad it, that Hennig got up after this. I mean, it, this is a big hit. This, keep in mind, guys, first play of the season for Michael Hennig. Hello. Nerves gone. Time to go play ball. Once he got up, I believe the big linebacker is the one on the sideline. Once he got up, he's ready to play ball. Frankly, 60 pounds bigger, but he's the one being attended to by the trainers. It's Brandon Thornton who spins off a tackle and gets a short game. Cody Wells, the linebacker there on the stop for the Gamecocks. Chris, these guys have been cooped up, and these impact players on offense and defense are colliding. Michael Hennig, the quarterback, see how he'll do. It's his fourth career start. You imagine getting hit like that in your fourth career start? And, of course, Omar Connor gets moved from quarterback to receiver to give him some more playmakers on the outside. And Eric Butler, a tight end, one of the best in the SEC. They get to third down, like right now. Number 88 will be at the top of the screen at the tight end. He's a guy to keep an eye on. They were very poor on third down, especially third and long last season. Henning almost stumbles coming back from center. Has some running room, but it closes up quickly, and it'll be stopped well short of the first down at the 21-yard line. Wells, the linebacker, again on the stop. Set up a field goal attempt. 
Frank so a success for South Carolina in this initial series. Chris, I was going to say, considering the turnover deep in their own territory, an issue last year for South Carolina was getting off the field. This time they forced a three and out, forced a field goal. And we'll see if Mississippi State can still try to capitalize with some points. It's Adam Carlson, 204 a year ago, out of the hold of Brooks Crabtree. It's a low kick, and he missed it wide left. This has been an issue for Kroom's team, kicking field goals. He said he's too nervous to watch his guys in warm-up. Now you see why. Still scoreless as the Gamecocks dodge an early bullet in Starkville. On its first play from scrimmage, but the defense holds. The Gamecocks miss a field goal. So three minutes in, it's possession number two for Mitchell and the Gamecocks. We'll see if he's settled down. This time they'll hand it off, and good penetration flying in there to make the play. It was Culberson again, the man who made the interception. Here's the Gamecock starting lineup. And we'll see backs rotating, Mike Davis, and we'll also see Corey Boyd. That offensive line is a question mark against a very, very good defensive line of Mississippi State. Of course, the maker to keep an eye on is number four, Sidney Rice, the sophomore. Davis lost three, second and 12. Mitchell back, little play action. Floats it over the middle, looking for Rice, deflected and almost intercepted. Good coverage, it was Jeremy Johnson, the safety. And then Hurd had a chance at the interception on the deflection. This is a defense built on physical play up front. You've got three seniors, three-year starters along that front there, and Robinson, Powell, and Hurd. That's a matchup the coaches like. The secondary, a little bit more of a question mark for the Bulldogs, but they played well early on. And now it's the Gamecocks in the third and long. Third and 12 for Mitchell. And Stud Rice, the bottom of your screen. Mitchell looking for Rice. He'll dump it off short. And that's Davis fighting for yardage, but he will not get the first down. Got across the 30. Looks to be a little bit short. Michael Hurd pressuring. Now, I take it take it back. Uh, I think he may have, uh, may have gotten to that yellow stripe. What do you think? It sure looks like it. I mean, usually... Usually when you see them that close on Thursday night and they get to the line, it's 100% it's accurate and it's usually the first down. Rice tried to break free down the side, but it's actually a good decision. I'll tell you, right now, early here in these first two series, the challenge that we thought would be presented to Steve Spurrier would be controlling the, the size and speed of the front of Mississippi State. And right now, Mississippi State's winning that battle. But I think here, Mitchell made the good decision. They pick up the first down just by dumping it down to the back. Nice check down. So they pick up the 12 yards. Mitchell, of course, the interception on the opening play. He led the SEC in that category last year with 12. He had six in the last two ball games, Kirk. So you wonder about his, his confidence. Spurrier, very eager to see him make good decisions. He wants to see poise on the road after that mistake. You know, it's crazy for a quarterback on the road, a guy who's been in the road in the SEC, a small little throw like that, dumping it down to a back and picking up the first down, sometimes can get you into rhythm and get you going here. Kenny McKinley in motion, but they hand it off to Davis inside in the immediate hit. Antonio Johnson, one of those senior studs on the defensive line. Good penetration. This is going to be the exciting battle is Antonio Johnson, Andrew Powell, Dewan Robinson. They have three senior defensive tackles. If you throw in the middle linebacker, Quentin Culberson in the middle, number two, you're talking about as good as you're going to see in the SEC. It's not just the size. It's the fact that they have the great quickness to go along with it, and that's going to challenge South Carolina and the rhythm that they're trying to uh, establish here early. One second down, Mitchell pressured and hit. Drop behind the line by Michael Hurd. He's the best sack artist in that front four. 
Confusion on South Carolina's offensive line. This time they go to an odd look. They've been playing with a four down look. This time they go with three. Nickel package. And by doing that, Chris, when I say nickel, it's five defensive backs. They move the defensive line to three down linemen. And the offensive tackle on the left side then just got confused. Didn't even see. Heard move to the inside. Great move and great speed there to get to Mitchell. Finn making his first start, and it's a tough baptism in the SEC against a pass rusher as good as Heard. Rice to the top of the screen now on third and 18 for Mitchell. A flag before the snap. Boy, this is a rough start for the Gamecock offense, which scored a touchdown on its first possession a year ago against UCF. Still different deal on the road against the Bulldogs here. Before the snap, false start number 71. Chris, I don't want to get carried away here, but we're, we're not even halfway through the first quarter. But let me tell you about Sylvester Crewman talking to him yesterday, the look in his eye. He realized these first two years have been difficult. Patience has been key for him and for his players. But I'm telling you, the energy in this stadium right now, this is an SEC feel right now. This is a different look looking Mississippi State team here. Now it's third and long. There's Corey Boyd now. His first game in 22 months. He's the back next to Mitchell. He gets the handoff. And he'll get short yardage. But that's kind of a give up call by Spurrier after the tremendous defensive pressure by Mississippi State. Anthony Littlejohn, the backup linebacker with the tackle. What a start for Mississippi State's defense. 2006 and Spurrier back to the drawing board here. Another punt. Ryan Suckup. And this is his first punt in a college game. Looks like the Bulldogs are playing for the return here. Omar Connor, the converted quarterback, now a receiver, is back deep. Suck up, gets a punt away, and Connor calls for a fair catch at his 34 yard line. So, the second offensive possession for Mississippi State. When we come back, it's all about the defense for the Bulldogs in the early going here at Starkville. Place on any campus, the cafeteria. Oh. Attacking the barbecue down here with a vengeance. How many straight meals have you had the barbecue? Three, uh, two or three. Yeah, we've, we've done well, but we got a workout in. So, that's all right. Midway first quarter, second possession for Mississippi State. This time, not the good field position. Their own 33. They hand it off up the middle, and bouncing through there is Brandon Thornton for a short game. He'll pick up about three. Talked about that Bulldogs offense. Michael Hennig, the quarterback, they expect big improvement from him, and that'll lead to big improvement from this offense, but protection from that offensive line is going to be very important tonight. You'll see the freshman there, Craig Jenkins. Second and seven, Henning, play action, a flag down in the middle, over the middle, almost intercepted on the coverage there was Carlos Thomas, the corner, but the flag is in the holding vicinity. Because we are going to get a holding call, but the way the play developed for Michael Hennig, young quarterback, holding on to the ball a little bit too long, and that is a, that is an extreme no-no in any conference, and especially the SEC, with a pattern coming across the middle, holding it that long, and giving holding a good corner time. Number 76 on the offense, 10-yard penalty from the previous spot, repeat second down. They got the center, Royce Blackledge, on the hold. Once again, it was Jasper Brinkley. The guy who hit Hennig so hard, helmet to helmet, in that first play, who pressured him. Good to see that he's back in the ballgame. Something to keep in mind, not only throughout this game early, but when you're watching college football this weekend. Keep in mind, we don't have preseason games of college football. These guys have been hitting each other for two or three weeks, adjusting to the speed of the game, not only tonight, but the whole weekend. It's very, very important to see who comes, who can adjust quicker is going to win the game. In second and 17, they zip the quick pass out here to Lance Long, and the veteran receiver slips the tackle and gets back to about the original line of scrimmage and throws his shoe in the process. Brinkley again on the stop. The linebacker very active early on for this South Carolina defense. The best pro prospect is the corner, number eight, Fred Bennett. The rover, Emmanuel Cook, will play a, a big role tonight. First uh, game in college football for this true freshman. It's fun to see the true freshman. Emmanuel Cook was a great running back out of the state of Florida. Moves over to safety, finds himself in the lineup starting. And in the SEC tonight, there are a few freshmen, true freshmen, on that side of the ball for the Gamecocks will be playing tonight. 
This is way out of their wheelhouse on third and ten. Once again, Henning is pressured. A flag is down again, and Michael Henning just running in circles as the Gamecocks converge for another sack. We check the flag, top of the field. Chris Hampton, the free safety in there with pressure. Bring two defense are getting after. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the tough part of opening the season in, in the conference. Where well, you're going up against great defenses. These are two talented defenses, and you could tell right now. The defensive coordinators are deciding we're going to bring the pressure and see if these quarterbacks can handle it. And the offensive line. Illegal formation, six men on the line of scrimmage on the offense. That penalty is declined. It'll be fourth down. So Blake McAdams back for his first punt. His sophomore, he was the regular punter a year ago. And this Kenny McKinley, sophomore. The regular punt return a year ago for the Gamecocks as well. Adams, good boot. McKinley will take it inside his 30. Slips a tackle. Has to juke to the outside, but he's pinned in. Gets close to the 34-yard line. So a very rocky start for Steve Spurrier's offense. Possession number three when we come back. The struggle, the Knowles and the Canes, presented by Dish Network Monday, 8 o'clock Eastern time. Boyd is the back, and he gets the flip pass from Mitchell. But once again, good swarm and pursuit by that Mississippi State defense. It was Keith Fitzhugh, the safety, who initially slowed down Boyd. Chris, we continue to talk about this, but the defenses are just pinning their ears back and bringing more than the offensive line can handle and the backs can handle, forcing these quarterbacks to just dump the ball off and get it off. And right now the defenses obviously have the upper hand. You know, South Carolina apparently, according to Mississippi State coaches, made some comments that this defense was a little bit vanilla, that it was very predictable and not that complicated. It's a great offense to that. Right now, Gamecock certainly being confused by what's going on on the defensive side of the ball. Once again, they show pressure. Mitchell back has protection this time and flips it out complete for a short gain. And Havlovich, the tight end, who makes the catch, and Mitchell is down holding the shin. He had initial time to throw, then after the throw was hit, and there you see Chris Smelly, the true freshman, who would be the backup if Mitchell can't continue. Looks like it happened on the follow-through. Not a late hit. Looks maybe his oh boy, yeah, his feet got caught up once he came through. There was traffic there. You can see that. Not Culberson once again was in there. Delwan Robinson, number 98, pressuring, as was heard, all converging along with an offensive lineman. There it is, his own offensive lineman, just yeah. the momentum of the, the sure force. What a moment for this kid. Chris Smelly may be forcing in duty. We certainly hope that Mitchell's okay. And help to his feet, but certainly favoring that right leg. You can see, Chris, the ankle kind of got caught underneath there, and let's hope that he's going to be okay. You, you touched on Chris Smelly, who, coming into camp, highly touted true freshman out of Tuscaloosa, Alabama, Alabama Player of the Year. He, he's going to be thrown into action here, and we, again, hope that Mitchell is able to come back. But Smelly, Chris, not only in high school did he do well, but in their three scrimmages, completed 64% of his passes for 509 yards. He broke a lot of Br uh, Brody Coyle's right. records in Alabama. Tuscaloosa is only about 80 miles from here. What a moment for Smelly. It's third and one in his first college play. And they'll hand it off to Boyd, who pulls ahead for the first down. Well, now Spurrier is going to earn his reputation as a sad moment for Mitchell. Helped off so much anticipation, Kirk, coming into this season. So much off-season preparation. Eyes on him and expected to improve so much as a quarterback. And he goes down early in the first game. Yeah, it's, it's too bad because he has, I think, a bright future this year with a year under his belt. But all of a sudden, the, the baton is handed to the true freshman, Chris. His first snap at ISO, a dream for your first play. Now we're going to find out first and ten look into his eyes as he looks into that Mississippi State defense's eyes and there's the first pass of his couch career he goes over there to Sidney Rice who slips a tackle and gets into Bulldog territory good safe throw 
Steve Spurrier is known as kind of the guru of quarterbacks, and we're going to see tonight. It's a true freshman, folks, looking into the eyes of an SEC defense. Makes his first throw a good one. He's a smart man. He goes to a guy who was all-conference last year, one of the best receivers in the country. Positive yards there for the first time on first, first down for the Gamecocks. Nice block by the receiver, Kenny McKinley, to help Rice get six yards. I'll hand it off to Boyd. He fights straight ahead, breaks the tackle, and gets near first down yardage across the 45-yard line. And now a little scuffle after the whistle. The flag is down. You can see that the helmets comes off. One of the Mississippi State players, Andre Powell, one of the tackles, was in there. If you want to get into the doghouse of Sylvester Croom, you get a 15-yard penalty because that's what he's been trying to clean out of this program. We'll see because the receiver from South Carolina, Kenny McKinley, number 11, got up into the, the face of Derek Pegues, the, the corner, number three, from Mississippi State. They could, they could call it either either way or on Pegues for coming a little bit as the second the man coming in. first down after the play. Dead ball, personal foul, number 75 oh. for South Carolina. That'll be a 15-yard penalty. We'll reset the chain. First and 10. Well, a, a very tough start for the young tackle, number 75, Germain Dufin. But they went for the third guy. Watch, watch, watch to the top right of your screen. There's McKinley, Pegues, and here comes 75 on Pegues. Boom. So they allowed the first two hits, and then they go, and they're going to call it on the big offensive lineman. The big guys never catch a break. I guess they figured he's got about 100 pounds on Pegues. you got to throw the flag on him. <laughs> yeah. Still first and 10. With the field position damaged by 15 yards. They'll pitch it off to Boyd running left and continues the tough running. You can see how much it means to Corey Boyd. He's a guy, that, again, that sat out all of last year with a suspension. Hasn't played in 22 months. And he is so eager. He says he hasn't been able to sleep at night trying to get out there and get on the field and wait for this moment. Chris, he has waited, and I think the offense has changed. The adjustments are being made now, which is very common. And with a young quarterback, they've decided to try to run the football, try to fight back against the speed of this Mississippi State defense by just getting physical. Second and four. Bulldogs again show pressure. Smelly. Swarm. Bernard Cheney, the linebacker, joining Culberson. Welcome to college football, true freshman, Mr. Smelly. Let's go to Reese Davis for a 30 and 30 update. All right, Chris, David Ortiz has a clean bill of health, at least as far as his heart goes. He's been released from the hospital, no heart abnormalities. I think his problem was a pectoral muscle. Mariano Rivera also, a MRI showed only a strained muscle for him, so he came in, got the final three out to the Yankees' victory over Detroit this afternoon, 6-4. to four. And also, Buster Olney reporting that the Red Sox have traded David Wells to the Padres. Sports Center after the game, mobile ESPN alerts all the time, Chris. Okay, Reese. A couple of sacks for each team here, and now the true freshman. Well, they'll call a timeout. Spurrier will have a, a conference with his young quarterback who's been tossed into the fray here because of an injury to Blake Mitchell. So we'll see what Spurrier has cooked up on third and long for his young quarterback. Excellence is not just a state of mind, it's a state of action. At Mississippi State University, you'll find an empowered student body applying academics to real-world situations. It's a place where you don't just take classes, you take action. Together, we work as a team, developing tomorrow's leaders today with innovative academic programs. We're affecting change in the world all around us. Experience a campus immersed in character. We are Mississippi State. One state, one team. Professor, I'm Sarah from Wednesday's physics class. Ms. Evans, third row. About our assignment. Yes. There is no proof yet. Correct. No definitive answer. Right. So our search is for the questions? Exactly. 
Exactly. Here at Mississippi State, they are so hungry for a winner after a pair of three and eight seasons. They have great expectations for this team. They were hoping, Kirk, that their offense would be much improved. At least Sylvester Croom was hopeful and confident. So far, it's been about their defense and an early injury to Blake Mitchell, the quarterback for South Carolina. Tosses a true freshman into this mix here. It's amazing to think a true freshman not playing against a one double A opponent in his first game, but on the road in the SEC from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. He knows what it means to a school like South Carolina. I think it's interesting at this point, something to watch is Steve Spurrier doesn't want his quarterback to make a silly mistake and turn it over. You can live here to just have to punt. If you have to punt, that's okay. But with a young quarterback, especially on third down and long, give him a throw that he's comfortable with and put him in a position where he's not going to be all of a sudden turning the ball turning the ball over and having to think too much. This is where Steve Spurrier kind of takes it to a different level in how he handles quarterbacks, getting a young guy ready like this. By the way, the Bulldogs called the defensive timeout after seeing what the Gamecocks have come out with. I mean, I know that you and Mr. Corso, people have called Steve Spurrier kind of the best quarterback coach that there is, and maybe that there ever was in college football, but what a challenge. I mean, he knows he's going to have to get creative to beat a very athletic, very tough physical defense here, but you got a coach to avoid a mistake with a young guy, and that's not his nature. No, I, I don't think it's his nature to be conservative. You know what? We saw after they, they picked up the first down on third down, his very next call was a pass. So I don't think he's going to be too conservative. I think you just have to be careful of what kind of passes you select and what kind of uh, scenarios you put him in because you don't want to turn the ball over. That's the key. Take you back to 92, a much younger-looking ball coach brought a top-10 Florida team in here, and they got ambushed by Mississippi State on a Thursday night. The Bulldogs just smothering Spurrier. I remember that game as a viewer. It was Shane Matthews who was uh, experiencing a long night. Jackie Sherrill rides off the winner. That was the first visit by Spurrier to Starkville. They came back here with 2,000 with a team that won the SEC title. And they gave up 47. So he's 0-2 here. 4-2 against the Bulldogs. On third and 13, Smelly in the shotgun. Flips it near side and a little miscommunication with the receiver there, Savell Newton. Newton did not break the route off. Well, there's, there's going to be miscommunication between a, a young quarterback and his receivers, especially on third down, because you know they're going to put pressure on you. They didn't sack him, Chris, but he felt that pressure from the Mississippi State defensive line because as soon as he delivered the football, you could see Mississippi State closing in. And look at the athletic ability and the way T Titus Brown that time went right around the right tackle, Jason Meredith. Suck up, boots a low kick, and this is Connor fielding it and hit immediately. Good coverage by the Gamecock punt coverage team. That was not an area of strength a year ago. Just a one-yard return after a 46-yard kick by Suck up. So no points, but a lot of good defensive play here and an injury. Again, we don't have a report yet. And the Santa of Blake Mitchell taken to the locker room, being looked at by the trainers for the Gamecocks and a true freshman Smelly jumping in there. So far we have not seen the progress, the improvement on offense that Crewman hoped for from Mississippi State. They have poor field position here. Well, we talked about how they feel that they're going to be a better group and we have, as you said, yet to see it. Eight yards of total offense at this point for the Bulldogs. Hand off into the middle, and that's the first carry in the college career of the freshman Anthony Dixon. They have great hopes and expectations for this very talented freshman tailback. Is that? I think that's putting it lightly. I, when we met with the coaches yesterday, we'd go over all these players, and they were excited about a lot of guys. And all of a sudden, we said, "What about running back?" And they, they got to Anthony Dixon, who's a true freshman, who just got his first carry, and they said. I, don't need, I, I want to hold back my excitement because we think Anthony Dixon can be really, really special, but we'll have to wait to see how he performs when the lights come on and he's playing in front of that crowd. Gained two yards in his first college carry. Another crack here. Slide to the outside, pulling ahead. You can see the 235 pounds, not your typical freshman running back. Emmanuel Cook there for the stop. Aaron, folks here I don't think are aware of how highly the coaches think of Dixon. He's been something of a secret. That is certainly true, Chris. First up, I'm going to give you an update on USC quarterback Blake Mitchell. What USC will confirm right now is he did 
have a laceration on his le ne uh, leg. It actually looked like a defender's face mask cut his leg. Now, obviously, you guys saw the replay. It looked like he twisted that leg pretty good. We cannot get them to confirm right now he is getting x-rays. As soon as I find out, of course, I will let you know, guys. Aaron, thank you. And that's it. A scoreless first quarter dominated by defense here. Mississippi State will again face a third and long when we come back to Starkville. Oh, college football back in the SEC. We've seen some SEC style hitting in defense so far. Over at Georgia, but they love Bully. The mascot here, and he's got his headstone inside the stadium, just as Uga does over in Athens. The defenses have been bullying the offenses so far tonight, and now it's Mississippi State with another third and long. They have not been able to convert a third down yet tonight. Third and seven. It'll be the shotgun for Hennig. And it pressured, hit as he throws, and almost intercepted by Jasper Brinkley, the linebacker. Once again, it was Casper Brinkley, Jasper's twin, who brought the pressure, almost set up an interception for his brother. Well, Tyrone Nix right now, defensive coordinator this year, taking over for Steve Spurrier, has got to be very excited. He told us on our call this week that he wants to get his team to understand to be tough, mentally and physically tough, and play hard. And so far through one quarter, that's exactly what they've done for him. They have not allowed a first down. Mississippi State's first three possessions. Blake McAdams to kick. It's a short kick, and Kenny McKinley will field it at the 43. Squirms out of there, twisting, but can't get away, and stop at the 45-yard line. Two-yard return after a 37-yard punt, and good field position now for the Gamecock offense and the true freshman quarterback. After the turnover, Chris, in the first possession by, by uh, South Carolina, you, you can feel the, the field is shrinking on Mississippi State. And in a defensive game like this, it's all about who's going to catch a break with special teams, who's going to turn the football over. And right now, we're seeing South Carolina get an advantage with that field position. This is the best that they've had all night. Right there. Mississippi State early because of that big turnover, but now it's starting to move the other way and see if the young freshman still under center for South Carolina, what he does with this field position. Mike Davis returns at tailback, replacing Boyd. And you can almost expect a lot of timeouts like this tonight with Chris Smelly tossed into the game. This is the first time tonight. Everybody wants to talk about the new rule and when they're going to start the clock. This is the first time. We got through a quarter and it wasn't a factor. This might have to do with being a freshman. But I saw the, the, um, the, uh, the official start the clock and I thought, I wonder how long it's going to take to get them out. When they came onto the field, they got into the huddle. You've got to come out on the field and get on the, over, over top of the ball and be ready to go. They win. That's what Steve Spurrier is talking to him about right now. When you leave the sideline huddle, go right out to the field and you need a little bit of tempo. You can't take your time. That's the first time the new rule has affected this game tonight. We we'll talk more about the new rule designed to shorten the length of games. It'll mean fewer plays for the offense. The coaches believe they don't particularly like it. Reese, let's check in with you in the studio. All right, Chris, Minnesota and Kent State. Glenn Mason going back to the home of his first head coaching job. It's on ESPN 360. And Brian Cupido, an underrated passer in the Big Ten, finding the redshirt freshman Eric Decker, 39 yards. Golden Gophers going up top for that score. Mason and the Gophers with a 17-0 lead at halftime. Randy Walker being honored at Miami, Ohio. The late Northwestern coach had Fitzgerald's team tied with the Red Hawks at the break. Times are changing when Big Ten teams are now visiting teams in the MAC. There will be six collisions this weekend between the Big Ten and the MAC. None more emotional than that game at Miami, Ohio. So first down for the Gamecock offense at the 46. Play action for the freshman. Smelly fires deep to take a shot downfield. And there's going to be a pass interference called there. Kenny McKinley was the receiver. David Hurd, the corner defending out there. First real downfield 
attempt for either team and results in a flag. Chris, there's the young quarterback here making a throw. It was an underthrow. What an amazing catch by Kenny McKinley, a former quarterback himself. Great quickness getting downfield. The ball's underthrown. He's he's beaten up on the play by Hurd, but he still comes back to make the catch. Good either. I didn't realize Pass he even caught the football. Oh, yeah. Number 23 on the defense. That penalty will be declined. First and 10. And this is a great call by Steve Spurrier, even with the young quarterback in. Takes a chance, goes downfield, and what an adjustment by McKinley to come back and make that catch. And Chris, when you have a defense that's pinning their ears and attacking the young quarterback, you've got to get him back and get rid of the ball quickly and allow one of your playmakers to win that battle on the outside. And that time McKinley did it for the game time. How did he keep that football from hitting the ground? Wow. Sophomore, hey, that was nice. High school quarterback should have good hands. And now Smelly and the Gamecocks in business at the 12. Here comes the noise and the cowbells that they tried to confiscate. Play clock running down and they did not get it off. Again, you saw the confusion up front trying to make a change. Too late. Too late, and that's the mechanics of getting the play called and getting it into a young quarterback. I want to reiterate Red one ball, thing here. Delay of game on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. Steve Spurrier told us this week when we got ready for this game, we talked about Blake Mitchell, and he's very excited about Blake this year. We started to talk about the backup, but he brought up the true freshman, Smelly, and he said, guys, don't be surprised to see Chris Smelly get a chance to play tonight. I want to get him some reps. So he was going to play tonight regardless, and he had the best preseason of any of the quarterbacks in the scrimmages. So he's looked very good the last three weeks. Hand it off. Mike Davis up the middle. This was not the ideal situation that Spurrier was looking for to get Smelly in the game. He wanted to kind of work him in a little bit if they got the lead, perhaps. Well, the reason, look at I think he wanted to so. try to get him quality reps tonight, and the reason is for, let's say, next week against Georgia. Let's say it's later against Florida. You want to have a backup quarterback who has some meaningful reps. Tonight, he's getting forced into these meaningful reps, and I'll tell you, so far, he's doing an outstanding job. He's had a couple delay of game penalties, but outside of that, he is showing a lot of moxie, a lot of pull for a young player. Davis goes in motion to the top of your screen. Bulldogs show pressure up the middle, come on the blitz. Smelly senses it, rolls out, and flips it over the head of the intended receiver. Michael Hurd once again in there pressuring the defensive end. Great job that time by South Carolina, making some adjustments in their pass protection. They picked, they picked up the stunt, they picked up the blitz. Loud that gives, gave Smelly enough time to look into that defense, but good coverage, good decision there that time. Just throw it away and live for the next play. So a 61-year-old head coach watching his 20-year-old rookie quarterback, and you can see that that's good news. The helmet is on for Blake Mitchell. A shin laceration apparently stitched up. He knows it will come back in. Third and 14 now. And here comes the noise. And the late pressure. And Smelly can't handle the snap. He recovers it. But another negative play is Jamar Chaney. That weak side linebacker came on the late blitz. Chris, I, I think the ball came up before Smelly was ready. He was looking up into the defense. And by the time the ball snaps, it's too late. Smelly lucky to even recover it. Steve Spurrier that time sensing something, trying to get the timeout in before the ball was even snapped. You saw Chaney coming under pressure. Now Ryan Suckup, who was 0 for 2 last year as a field goal kicker, tries from 39 yards. And he will successfully convert the field goal, the first of his college career. So... With a freshman quarterback, the old coach is sweating a bit, but the Gamecocks strike first. Reza. Evident four is the record for Blake Mitchell, the starting quarterback, and Aaron Andrews has a report on him. Well, Chris, Blake Mitchell back on the sideline, warming up right now. He's got his helmet on. Shin taped up pretty well. We were told six to seven stitches, like we mentioned. It looked like his shin was lacerated from defense's face mask. He came over to the bench, talked to Corey Boyd, some of the receivers. Steve Spreer came over to him. Looks like he's going to be back in there as soon as USC's offense takes the field, guys. Boy, is that good news, Aaron. That is great for South Carolina. 
And a very deep kickoff. Big East will down it. And the Bulldogs still looking for their first first down. We'll start at the 20 yard line. Another look at the injury. Keep an eye on that right shin and the helmet that gets near it. After seeing this injury and the force that this, you know, it wasn't the hit, it was just the force of the defensive lineman and his own offensive lineman. It's just great news to think that he's able to be not only coming back tonight, but he's not going to miss any other games. Hopefully he's able to come back and, and help this team. Toughness, part of the makeup. And Smelly did his job. It was the 42-year-old pass to McKinley and the circus catch that set up that field goal. Now the Bulldogs eager to get their offense on track. They hand it off to the rookie. There's Anthony Dixon, and you can see why, a quick glimpse of why they're so high on this guy and why they believe he is a future big star in this league. 15 yards. Chris, it's a great run, but watch his lead back, 41, Bryson Davis. This is an impressive block to seal the edge right there. It allows him to bounce it to the outside, and now you get a good look at the speed of this young man. Great speed, but an outstanding block by a veteran, off, a veteran fullback in Bryson Davis. Davis, 6'2", 260 pounds, leading the way for the freshman. And Dixon had 30 pounds on Cook, the man who was trying to tackle him. Handed up up the middle again to Anthony Dixon, comes out of Jackson, one of the most highly touted running back prospects in the state of Mississippi a year ago. Not the speediest guy, but you look at him, you can't believe it. Almost 240 pounds that he is a true freshman and has great quickness for that size. True freshman, and when we talked with Sylvester Trim, he talked about Amon Green. He brought up names, you know, like Amon Green. And Woody McCourty, the offensive coordinator, is bringing up a name like Jamal Lewis, who he had at Tennessee. I mean, this, this young man has a chance to be special. That time, a swarm and good penetration by the Gamecock defense, and Dixon is brought down behind the line of scrimmage. Chris, as good as he is, when they have Tyrone Nix, the defensive coordinator from South Carolina, realizes the quickness and ability he has, he's putting eight and nine guys at the line of scrimmage. Eventually, Mississippi State's going to have to protect their quarterback and give him time to throw the ball downfield. If they're going to pressure and put eight and nine in the box, you have to be able to throw the ball vertically downfield to slow down that pressure. It's tough to do, obviously, on third and ten. Bulldogs have not been able to block that game cut front so far. Heading back on third down, pressured again, flushed out, tosses it downfield, had a man wide open, but under pressure, could not get it to the receiver. And uh, Sapp, the linebacker in there, pressuring again. Still no first downs. 0 for 4 on third down as the offensive misery continues. We can talk all we want about the improvement of Mississippi State at quarterback and at running back with Dixon and Omar Connors on the outside. But if the offensive line is not going to help this skill, it's not going to matter. And right now they're losing the battle in the trenches to South Carolina. South Carolina wants it more at this point up front. Blake McAdams, good boot as he forces Kenny McKinley. Way back inside the 24 fair catch. 48 yards on the punt. Time for the Aflac trivia question. You know that Steve Spurrier is seeking career win number 150. He's the fourth fastest ever to get to 149 through 16 years. Who had the most wins through 16 years coaching as head coach? Oh, boy. I was going to say Bear Bryant. Throw a name out there. We're in the south. Well, Barry Switzer had kind of the most wins oh, at yeah. early start to a career. I know that. No doubt about that. But there's usually a trick. There's usually a tie in here. Yeah, and usually. <laughs> I'm just on. I'm guessing. <laughs> Rory Boyd, the tailback offset, gets the handoff. Spinning away through arm tackles and gets across the 20 as Mitchell is back in the game. That's good news for South Carolina faithful. They were able to recover the fumble. For an update, let's go back to Reese Davis. Chris, as you well know, you just don't walk into Kelly Short Stadium in Mount Pleasant, Michigan and stroll out with a victory, but that's what BC's trying to do. Matt Ryan finding Tony Gonzalez for the 19-yard touchdown there. 31-17, nice and high scoring. The Chippewas getting back close. All right, a little different feel in Starkville here. 3-0 South Carolina. Davis in the eye formation on second and five. Gamecox dodging a bullet, recovering that fumble, and it's a short game for Davis is once again clogging the middle as the Mississippi State defensive line. They show their depth as Chester Burns joins Delron Robinson on the tackle. 
Chris talking a lot about Tyrone Nix and, and how he's doing a good job for South Carolina. How about Ellis Johnson, the defensive coordinator on the other side, right there in the middle for Mississippi State. Right now putting a lot of pressure on Steve Spurrier. He's gone up against Steve Spurrier a number of times in his days in the SEC at different universities. And right now he has got a great scheme working against Steve. On third and four, that's Sidney Rice at the top of the screen. Mitchell. Five on the play clock as he snaps it. Hands off to Davis. Excellent pursuit. Fighting, but he won't get to the first down. Flying around once again. Quinton Culberson, the middle linebacker, has been so active in the early going for Ellis Johnson's defense. And the frustration for Spurrier continues. Bulldogs looking for good field position as they force the punt from Ryan Suckup. Chris, as bad as their offense has looked, I'm telling you, this defense is not only going to be good tonight for Mississippi State, but they're going to be good all year because of this, how big and physical they are up front in the middle. It's very difficult to run the ball because of the middle linebacker and their two defensive tackles that they have. Omar Connor pushed way back in the deep kick from Suckup. Feels it at the 20. And once again, excellent coverage by the Gamecocks. So, but they thought might be good field position isn't after the 55-yard punt. We are Mississippi State in the sorority house and all over this campus. Tremendous anticipation for this game, wanting to see improvement on offense that hasn't happened so far. Aflac trivia question. We had the most wins after 16 years as a college head coach. Spurrier fourth in that category. Tom Osborne. Oh, that one. could have been a good guess. Switzer, Osborne. Yeah. Piled yeah, them up pretty you're, quick. You're close. So that's almost uh, 10 wins a season if I do my math there. 16 years. Yeah, that's years. pretty good. That's pretty good, yeah. That's getting it done. <laughs> he finished pretty well, too. He didn't exactly peter out at Nebraska. Before the <laughs> no, not at all. National title. This is the freshman, Dixon, getting the handoff from Hennig. And again, not much running room. And that Gamecock defense continues to just crowd the line of scrimmage. That was Eric Norwood, the true freshman, tackling the true freshman. Well, right now, Chris, well, not right now, the entire game up to this point, South Carolina not respecting the passing game of Mississippi State. Eight, sometimes nine guys at the line of scrimmage. And the quarterback heading right now is one of three for seven yards. They throw more pass plays, but he's either had to run for his life and get sacked, or he's just had to throw it away. This time rolls out. It's outside the pocket, and Jasper Brinkley got a hand on it. The middle linebacker, good job sliding on coverage, and Marvin Sapp was the backer pressuring Hennig and flushing him that direction. This has been a problem the last couple of years for Mississippi State. The third down offense, awful. They haven't converted one tonight. And you can see when they have third and longer than three yards to go, it's, it's really dismal. It did get a little bit better late in the year when Henning took over as starter, but ugly numbers and so far no improvement. Something Boone certainly expected this season. Third and nine out of the shotgun. Decent protection, but the throw for Connor is high. That time he had a little time, a little eager on the throw as Fred Bennett, the excellent corner, was covering Connor. Well, the, he had time to throw, Chris, but because he's been running for his life, he's not getting back and setting his feet and throwing the football with accuracy when he does have time because he's been so hurried. So in his mind, they are really, it, they, the South Carolina defense is in, in the mind right now of Michael Hennig because even when he does have time, he's feeling hurried. Blake McAdams, the punters, one guy has performed well so far for Mississippi State. Hangs it up there. There's traffic around Kenny McKinley, who calls a fair catch at the 37-yard line. Not as noisy so far as they hoped it to be, but the 30-year quest to outlaw the cowbells there. And how's it going so far? Give me a progress report. All right. <laughs> yeah, that's tradition here at Mississippi State, guys. Well, you see these fans are into it. People were on the edge of their seats, you know, because the SEC was going to make a decision before the game to see if they were going to allow these cowbells. They were trying to ban 
artificial noisemakers, Chris. Well, the word we're getting from the SEC is this. Obviously, they're letting everybody have their bells tonight. They're going to rectify the situation at the end of the game, see if anyone complains, guys. Mitchell flips it. Can't fight Savelle Newton. He gets a couple blocks and gets about eight and a half, nine yards. I want to know where Aaron got her bell. Did she sneak one in, too? Because that's, that's the way they're getting them in. It's illegal, but they're sliding them into the purse. They're hiding them under their shirt. You can't you can't stop it. I don't care what rule you're going to kind of come up with in the SEC. Starkville still going to bring the cowbell. And why bother? They shook Jordan, the coach of Auburn, years ago in the 70s that complained, and the NCAA for a while had, had a rule that would result in a five-yard penalty or a loss of timeout. They've taken that away this year. So go at it, fans. Bring this cowbell. Tradition, baby. Uh, Make some noise for that South Carolina offense here. Mitchell has some time, but it runs out, and he's dropped. Once again, Michael Hurd, the defensive end, the senior out of Lovejoy, Georgia, having himself a heck of a ball game against that young left tackle. Chris, not only that, it was outstanding coverage downfield. Well, just a great job there in the way they were able to take things away from Blake Mitchell. An SEC opener, crucial for both teams here, and it's been dominated by both defenses early on. An injury scare for South Carolina. Blake Mitchell, the quarterback, missed a couple of series, but he's been stitched up, and he's back in there. The backup freshman Chris Smelly led the Gamecocks on a field goal drive. The only point so far, 33. They fake it to Boyd. No, nope. he got the football, but a flag is down near his side of the field. One of those line of scrimmage things. Jamar Chaney on the stop against Boyd, and Hurd was there again. The complaint from visiting offenses is that those artificial noisemakers making it impossible to hear in the field. Be worth a couple of five-yard penalties, but what are you going to do? Now, whenever you get the huddle, this this could be. This makes you nervous. <laughs> he wants a long go, huddle. This could go either way. And it's going to be an illegal block below the waist on South Carolina. That's a penalty of the major variety, and what was a third and short for Spurrier's offense becomes a lot more challenging now. Great shot of it here, Savell Newton. Just comes down a little bit too soon on Derek Pegues. Gets down below his left knee. Crack back on number 13. That'll be a 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat third down. That's Newton. That's a pretty good job out of the strength of that Mississippi State defense at front seven. All those veterans in there. They have, they have veterans in the inside, Chris, and the linebackers. And just the overall speed and attitude that they play with, it's contagious. And when you have success, it breeds more success. And right now, they're, they're taking the field. Both these defenses taking the field with a tremendous amount of confidence. Three down linemen in third and 16. And... Late pressure right at the middle. Mitchell, no chance. Flips it short, incomplete. Coming on the blitz was Quinton Culberson, that active middle linebacker is having a good ball game. Well, he has been all over the field, and he's a great player, Chris, but nobody touched it. And he came right up the middle. The, the quickest spot to the quarterback's right up the middle, and the offensive line has to be aware of that. I don't care if the screen's set up or not. Somebody has to at least bump Culberson to slow him down. And Mississippi State had that covered all over the place. So suck up. Busy man back to front on fourth and 16 here. Omar Connor is deep. Throwback football here. Opening night in the SEC. <laughs> That's a kick off the side of the foot. And we get a very favorable bounce as Connor just has to let it go and it'll come dead at about the 12-yard line. So an offense that has really struggled in this first half so far. We'll have some tough fifth field position to deal with after the 58-yard punt. Combination of very aggressive athletic defenses and some offenses that have been confused and haven't executed well. Three zip Gamecocks. Under Armour advantage. Quinton Culberson, the 
top tackler a year ago, an outside linebacker. He was a safety, he was a corner, now he's the middle backer. The uh, middle linebacker who's been not only involved, but I think he has created the tempo. First play of the season, he comes up with an interception. What I like this year is he's using better technique. Last year he got into some trouble at times, but he's been involved and he's been all over the field. And of course, he put the pressure on that last play on Blake Mitchell and forced South Carolina into a punt. So tough field position, once again on first down, they'll run the football as Brandon Thornton, the veteran, returns. Chris Hampton on the tackle. You gotta put this on the O-line, I guess, at Mississippi State. And tough field position when your offensive struggle, it's difficult to take risks if you're Sylvester Croom, but it's been tough to block those guys up front. Well, they've they've averaged second 11 tonight and third and nine, and they have not thrown the football yet on first to 10. They've got to be able to mix it up. If, and I know right now they're deep in their own territory, but eventually they're going to have to mix it up. That was a bonanza to get five yards on first down. They give it to <laughs> Fortin again for a short game. I'm telling you. I'm telling 11 you. life, they get five on first down, the way things have gone so far. And after the first couple of years of Croom's regime again, his guys so optimistic and so much belief as you see some of the cooling systems being used on the Gamecock bench. It's not that hot, fellas. This is, this is heaven if you're a football player in the SEC in late August. Chris, you know whose name we haven't said yet tonight? Omar Connor, who's at the bottom of the screen, number 14, the young man who was a quarterback and moved to receiver. They've got to get him the football. Instead, they hand it off to Fulton, breaks the tackle, and now on second, third effort, does get the first down. There's a flag late that was after he did make the first down. And they could call a quick face mask there. Instrumental face yeah. mask. Number eight on the defense. Five-yard penalty from the end of the line. First and ten. And that was the corner. Fred Bannon who quickly got a hand in there and took it away. Thornton had first down yards before that. Well, anything you can do to get extra yardage right now for this Mississippi State. Bennett did accidentally grab the hold of the face mask, but the more impressive thing to me was Thornton running through Chris Hampton's tackle two yards short of the first down and showing some toughness there to fight to get the first down. Throw the football here. Dixon, the freshman, returns a tailback now, spelling Thornton, and they'll hand it to him. And he's got some room. Bounces it. Shows the speed. Turns the corner against Fred Bennett and picks up about 12 yards. KC Rogers, the fullback, threw a nice block there, but you can see the quicks for that big freshman. It's a first down for the Bulldogs. Back to the studio to check in with Reese. All right, Chris, Lou, and Mark alongside. Coming up on the Pontiac Performance Halftime Report, David Wells out of Boston and closer to first place. Plenty of highlights from opening night, and who is number one? Well, I'll tell you why Steve Spurrier should be particularly happy with this first half performance. Well, I know who's number one, the Texas Longhorns. They're defending the national championship. Wealth of talent on both sides of the ball. All right, we'll talk about it at halftime. See you, Chris. Throwing deep down the field, incomplete. Finally, they, they have a first down throw it was intended for Keon Humphreys, and Carlos Thomas was there on the coverage. That's, That's exactly, what you're looking for. Exactly, exactly. And even though they, it's an incompletion, at least they got back five steps and just got rid of the football, and Keon Humphreys almost ran underneath that for a big gain. But just anything at all to try to slow them down. And I, you know, I, I know right now we're seeing Dixon, and he got up, he got loose on that first and ten. But at this point, you've got to break some of your tendencies here for the first half because South Carolina is not respecting the passing game at all of the Bulldogs. Truman and McCorby had intended to go downfield, but pressure on Henne kind of changed their plans. He flips it short. It's complete to Lance Long. And Lance Long, the senior, scampering for a first down in the South Carolina territory. And there's a scuffle after the play. 13-yard gain. And the officials, they're going to let that go. They're going to let that go. I don't know if they saw that. Well, let's first talk about the fact that the quarterback took a shot, got back, and delivered the football. He's been beaten up this entire first half. He throws off his back foot because he has to. And how about Lance Long not giving up on a play? Get the hog mollies involved there. Get him in front of you. Wiggling and moving through and picking up the first down. Long, an interesting story there. The Michigan native played at Toledo. We saw Sylvester Cruz's introductory press conferences. I want to play for that guy. He came down here and he found a spot for him. Henning flushed out, and he'll just throw it away. 
Another throw on first and ten. He's gassed. This time it's just a Chris, just a mix-up. Mix-up between the wide receiver and his quarterback. But I like the momentum all of a sudden. It feels a little different for Mississippi State. They're able to get out of the hole, able to mix it up a little bit more now with some, with some throwing. And that's one way to slow down Tyrone Nix in his defense is mix it up a little bit more on first and ten. Keep them guessing. When they know what's coming, they're too fast and too talented to be able to do that against them. And the two passes on first end have been the last two first down plays. Once again, it's second and ten, though. And a flag on the play as they hand it off to the veteran Thornton who's back in there. It was Thornton who did the tough running to get the initial first down of this drive. And then the youngster Dixon who broke another run to gain field position. It's a false start. Neither offense at this point can afford these kinds of penalties. Uh, uh, that's the kind of penalty that drives Kroom crazy. He says, if it's a penalty you know, at or before the snap or after the play is whistled dead, then I'll go crazy. That's the kind of thing that bothers him. Oh, sure. Sure. The, you know, it's, 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 I'm really looking forward to seeing the development of this offense for Mississippi State. I know they've gotten off to a, just a, a sluggish start. Mississippi State's won this first half, but they are building a little bit of momentum. Sylvester Kroom told us that Michael Illegal Hennig... formation, six men on the line of scrimmage on the offense. The penalty is declined. It'll be third down. Michael Hennig, his, his young quarterback, who committed, by the way, to Louisville, but then ended up coming to Mississippi State, has a strong arm. In fact, the offensive coordinator, Woody McCorvey, said he's got the strongest arm I've ever coached. And Woody McCorvey's been all over the SEC, Tennessee and Alabama and other stops, and he said it's the strongest arm that he's ever coached. And he's tossing T. Martin into that so equation. if you yeah. give the guy some time to throw, he can do some things for you, and I think that he understands the offense enough to be able to do some things as well. Timeout, Mississippi State. That's their second timeout of the first half. And he didn't like what he saw on that third down play. Chance if they can convert this, get close to field goal range, although field goal kicking, as we've seen already, not a strength for this team. Our All-State standings, taking a look at the SEC. Again, it was South Carolina with the win at Tennessee. The win over Florida at home, and they shared second place with the Gators behind Georgia. Duplicating that will be tough because the Gamecocks will wear a big target. This is a very important swing game for both teams, but especially for South Carolina if they have designs for you know, competing, as you see Henning treated over there. He's yeah. taking some pops, huh? Remember when I said he looked gassed, he was wincing, and now you're starting to make some sense. That was the, that was a big first down where he had his, quarter, or his receiver, Lance Long, but all the weight coming down on him that time from, from South Carolina. Yeah, that was Marquis e. Hall. <laughs> Look at him trying to withstand. That is, that is a painful thing with all that weight coming down, especially if that's a shoulder. They're walking him to the, the dressing room now with 40 seconds to go in the first half, hopeful that Admire his courage back. trying to continue to play, but Marquis e. Hall got through there, came down right on top of that left shoulder. As you said, Chris, that's over 300 pounds coming down, and now it's on the other side. Another, this time a redshirt freshman and Trey Rutland to see what he can do. Decatur, Georgia. Rutland, a, a mobile guy, but again, absolutely no experience as Mitchell watches his counterpart take his turn walking out to the dressing room. He's been able to return, but here is Trey Rutland now in a very important ninth play of this drive, third and seven, as they try to get into field goal range. Quarterback run, you think? Throw him the into the fire. Gonna throw. Down the field. Woo! He's got a man wide open, tripped away at the last minute. Keon Humphreys was open. Rutland floated the pass in there. And Carlos Thomas, the corner, the sophomore, closed quickly to tip it away. Third down. You bring in a quarterback, first snap of his career, and he puts it right on the money to Keon Humphreys. Humphreys gets behind Thomas, and he is there. Oh, my gosh. He's like, oh. He's happy. He put the ball right where he had to be, right where it had to be. Unbelievable effort there. And it was Captain Munnerlin, the true freshman corner, who was down there to help defend as well. And Broom has decided to go for it here on fourth and seven, but they'll call timeout. Defensive timeout with 33 seconds to go in the half here. How about that if he connected on his first college pass? 
Well, we, we've gotten a look here tonight at one true freshman who was forced into action for South Carolina when Blake Mitchell went down. And then Trey Rutland, who is a red shirt, strong arm. They say he's, he's a great athlete, but he's got a great arm. He just needs reps. And, you know, again, opportunity tonight to see what he can do with 33 seconds to go. Interesting decision here by Sylvester Croom, and we go back to the game, the game clock operation and some of the changes that everybody knew was going to affect the end of the half and the end of a game. The game clock will begin to start kind of when the play clock is put into, uh, you know, into effect. It's not going to. I don't think it'll make much of a change when they no. when they start the clock on kickoff. That's just a few seconds, but it will shorten the game. I mean, if you want to look at this game, maybe not a perfect example because it's been a lot of running plays, but only defense. 51 snaps so far combined for. Team. That's not a lot of snaps and a half. So we'll, we'll begin to chart this over the first few weeks and see what effect that has on college football. This is a little bit of a gamble. If they cannot convert this, the Gamecocks will have good field position to perhaps try to get down a field goal range themselves. Rutland up the middle, and he's going to be stopped short of that first down. About two yards short at the 38, and the Gamecocks will take over. And we'll see here. Now they've got a they spot it. They got to hurry. Right. They've got to, they, and they don't have any timeouts. South Carolina is out of timeouts. They'll come out and try, get ready to go here and see if they can pick up some some yardage and try to get into field goal range. And see, it took them a while to spot that ball and get it ready for play, but the seconds are ticking Fox down. Going. I mean, Mitchell's got to adjust here. Trying to tell his lineman to get down. Tick, tick, tick. 14, 13 and a half. And Mitchell deep down the sidelines looking for Rice, but it's out of bounds. We see the new rule taking effect there. It, it could cost South Carolina a couple plays in this possession. Well, Chris, in my opinion, you've got to leave the huddle with the intention of getting to the line of scrimmage as if it's, you know, aware that the clock's going to start. South Carolina didn't even look like they were thinking. The offensive linemen were just kind of looking around at one another. And Blake Mitchell finally had to say, let's go, let's go. And you know it's driving the, the head coach crazy. Come on. They've got to leave the huddle <laughs> and get out there ready to go. They wasted 10 seconds that time. And that's going to come down to preparation with this new rule. Up should be the last play of the first half. They zip it over here to Sidell Newton, who gets a block, gets outside, and could be forced out of bounds. But triple zeros on the clock, the kind of half from the Bulldogs' defense they were looking for, but a nightmare on offense for Mississippi State. Spurrier will try to regroup his offense as well. Let's go to Aaron with Coach Kroom. Chris, thanks. Coach, what did Michael Hennig say to you when he came out of the game? Well, Mike wanted to stay in there, but right now it doesn't appear he may be able to go back. We were worried that he may have a broken shoulder. I uh, don't know for sure yet, but uh, that was the first uh, diagnosis from our trainer. So uh, if that's the case, he wanted to even go back and try to run that play, but uh, I think he's probably done for tonight. If he, if he is done, what do you plan to do for the second half? Trey Rowland. Uh, you know, Trey's had a lot of work. Uh, you know, he's, he's the second guy, and and you can see right there, he can throw the football. And uh, uh, we just got to get the ball moving. I'm not worried. Um, uh, you know, I, I hate this for Mike because he's worked awful hard to get here. But uh, we got to go with the next guy. Coach, thank you. Chris? Not a little bit longer. So, Chris, my opinion is this so far that first half. Where's the offensive line for either team? The offensive lines for both teams are just getting whipped. It's a matter of not only the strategy of the defenses, but the energy level which they're playing with that are just, right at this point, outmanning and out-hustling both offensive lines. Neither team able to reach 90 yards. It was 42 yards on that catch by McKinley. Almost half of South Carolina's total output in that first half. It's been enough so far because the defense has been so strong against the Bulldogs' offense for which Sylvester Kroom had such high hopes this season. There's still time, but they'll have the backup quarterback, Trey Rutland, under center for the first possession of the second half. And Derek Pagese, a chance to run it back. He bounces into the wall, gets away, and a hard-earned return after the 22-yard line. Jared June, a rover. Good coverage on special teams. The Gamecocks have shown big improvement in that area tonight. That was a concern for Spurrier. And there goes Rutland, the redshirt freshman of Decatur, Georgia. Gifted athlete, but just no experience. 
Uh, so far, the front seven from South Carolina. Look how active they have been at this point in every facet, and especially when it's come to defending the run and getting getting Mississippi State into obvious passing downs. Let's see if Rutledge's athletic ability can make a difference. They hand it off, and the freshman Dixon fighting for tough yards as the offensive line able to open a little crease for the rookie along the right side there. Manuel took the rover in on the stop. Five Anthony yards. Dixon, Chris, is a true freshman. We've saw, we've seen him a, a little bit. So far, eight carries. The coaches are very excited about what he can offer. And up to this point, I think he's probably been the one guy that's been the most consistent, even though he's a true freshman. We're probably going to see more of him here in the second half. He's replaced by Thornton, who bounces again near the 30 for more tough yards. And let's go to Aaron Andrews for an update on the starting quarterback for the Bulldogs, Mike Hennig. Chris, I'm just standing by right now by Mississippi State's locker room. I spoke with the Bulldogs orthopedic surgeon. They are awaiting right now results from an x-ray, possibly on Michael's collarbone. They just ran into the locker room to see what those x-rays say. And when we find out, I will definitely let you know, guys. Aaron, we'll keep an eye on that. One of the things with Rutland is his athletic ability when things break down, the ability to scramble and pick up first down. Omar Connor in motion. And the lefty finds him for a first down. Nice, accurate throw as the ex-quarterback, Omar Connor, catches it from the backup. Nice little, nice little rub route there. For nice throw by Rutland for the first down. This is going back to the first half with Michael Hennig, who these coaches feel could be their leader. Marquis Hall breaks through all 300 pounds of him. It was interesting to see Hennig tried to go the next play, and at that point he had to call a timeout. He was in too much pain and had to be removed from the game. Rutland comes in his very first pass on third and long, puts it right on the money to Keon Humphreys, only to have the pass dropped. And play action. Down the middle as they take a shot, but it's overthrown and intercepted. There was double coverage. He was looking for Connor, but Chris Hampton and Fred Bennett were there. And the turnover. Decisions, decisions for young quarterbacks. Well, miscommunication along with Omar Connor, who is a former quarterback, giving up on his route. He's looking back, thinking the play is over. The ball is thrown beyond him. And, of course, there are two South Carolina defensive backs fighting over the ball. But Omar Connor needs to get on the same page with Trey Rutland and talk about what happened there. And for Chris Hampton, his first career interception, the junior out of Memphis. Impacts in business at the 21-yard line. Mitchell flips it out on the flat. And shaking tacklers is Sidney Rice, who was very, very quiet in the first half, limited to just one catch. Little John there on the stop. Aaron? Chris, news not good from Mississippi State's locker room. I just spoke with their team orthopedist. Michael Hennig did, in fact, break his collarbone. Now he said if there is good news with this, it is not with his throwing arm. And he's walking out of the locker room right now, guys. That left arm in a sling. Very tough guy, but you can see the emotion on his face. He's... Waiting for this chance to be a quarterback. Three starts last year. Very excellent off-season of work as Davis bounces it for a first down across the 35-yard line. But Hennig grew up an Auburn fan. Auburn's coming in here next, and he was so keyed up for this game, for that game, for the season, and now we have to wait. This is a kid that put the entire off-season and became the leader, the glue of this team. The players love Michael Hennig. He became the vocal leader. He became the guy that got this team to understand the importance of seven-on-seven seven and pass skeleton. When the coaches aren't here in June and July, he's their guy. And now he has to hand that, that baton to the young redshirt freshman. And he may go over and try to coach up Trey Rutland a little bit. Meantime, Mitchell gets pressure from the backside. Hit as he throws, and it's incomplete. He was looking for Jared Cook to tie it in once again. Michael Hurd, the defensive end, is having a monster night against that freshman left tackle for the Gamecocks. Pressure. Yeah, great pressure there that time, and that's what Mississippi State's going to have to do. When you lose your leader, you lose your go-to guy, you find out what, what kind of character you have in your team very early. You can see by the look at the look in his eyes, he's, he's, he can't do anything other than encourage his team. They're right in a position right now 
to compete and win an SEC game. And he's going right to the redshirt freshman to talk to him about what he can do to try to help him out. He went to Omar Connor, one of the leaders, the ex-quarterback, to talk to him as well. Cannon in the air, and that was... Quinton Culberson, who couldn't locate the ball after he batted in the air, trying for a second interception, but the monster night continues for number two. Great call here by Ellis Johnson. He brings both his linebackers. Number 22, Cheney gets picked up by Mike Davis, and that time, Culberson gets in there. He's one of our impact players on defense right in the middle there. He has been all over the field, and that time, Jamar Cheney, one of our other impact players from the beginning of this telecast, was also in there to force the block by Davis that freed up Culberson. Cheney, the speedy sophomore, Culberson and Hurd are seniors. Here comes the noise on third and ten for Mitchell. Dumps it off short, it's complete, but nowhere near a first down. A safe outlet to Davis and Culberson, one more tackle. What a performance tonight by this guy. An early bid for all SEC. A guy that we've talked a lot tonight, Chris, and how he's moved around from corner to safety to outside linebacker to Mike linebacker in the middle last year. He's found a home, and this year he's becoming not only a great athlete, but a technician. And you have a year of experience in the SEC. It's amazing what that can do for the confidence of a linebacker. Ryan Suckup has the field goal tonight, but he's been a lot busier as a punter. He's going to fake it and make it across midfield. Ryan Suckup with a 45-yard line of Mississippi State. Wow. Was it planned or just great improvisation? No, that's that's <laughs> improvisation there, Chris. Suckup's been the, the busiest guy for South Carolina tonight. He felt the pressure that time, and he just pulled the ball down. I think he was surprised to see how much turf he had in front of him. Look at the, the this man came free right up the middle. He just pulled the ball down. Tried to make something happen. Next thing you know, he's well beyond the first down marker. One of the best plays tonight for South Carolina. Edwin Chambers ran it out, but Suckup has given the Gamecocks a spark. And now Mitchell delivers to Newton near side. He'll pick up about it's six. Well, if he can't get it on offense, he, special teams, even an unintentional big play. Well, anytime Steve Spurrier gets a chance to get on national TV, he'll take whatever he can get, especially on a night like tonight where things have not been that good for his offense. But he will take an assist from the punter to get the ball now into Mississippi State uh, territory. And he's got to get his quarterback back and getting rid of the football because this pressure from Mississippi State has been consistent the entire night. Mitchell on second and five. It's dropped over there by Newton. It was wide open. Jeremy Johnson in coverage. We go back to the play by, by Suckup, Kirk. It's his first game punting in college. The heads-up play not to kick the ball into the rush and get the thing blocked. So first a good decision, and then the ability to scoot out and get that first down. A vertebra would have been a disaster for South Carolina. And in this game, where field position is so important, it's a it's a play like that. Even if even if South Carolina's not able to convert here, at least you can move the ball back and pin Mississippi State back and force Mississippi State to do something. Yeah, you didn't see he had the chin strap on, anticipating a punt. Spurrier hoping <laughs> for a first down here on third and six. Here come the Cowbells. They fake the pressure. Mitchell flips it off. Nice job getting it to Jared Cook, the tight end, who runs down inside the 25-yard line. So they don't bring heavy pressure that time. And the 20-yard gain to Cook. This time, Chris, it was a crossing route with Savelle Newton from the left side, top of the screen into the slot, comes right across. A little, oh, I'm sorry, it's Kenny McKinley. A little bit of a kind of a rub there, trying to pick up a linebacker crossing with McKinley and with Cook. That time, Cook wide open. Blake Mitchell sees him and picks up a first down. Nice block that time by Mike Davis, also to give Mitchell a little bit more time. Fifty-eight yards on this possession so far for the Gamecocks. Mitchell 
Looking to the end zone, over through Rice. Adam. David Hurd was the corner. He was beaten. What I like here is that they're, they're trying to stretch the field. Everything seems to be playing within the ten, 10 yards of the line of scrimmage. I like the fact that they were trying to get down, and you can see how graceful Sidney Rice is for his size. 6'4", over 200 pounds, an all-conference receiver in the SEC. He had his man beat. It's a matter of putting the ball in the money there by Blake Mitchell. No relation to Jerry, but he has 36-inch vertical, 4.5 speed, 6'4", still just a sophomore, but they've done a good job containing it tonight. Bulldogs got away with one there on the overthrow. This time they dump it off to Davis. Surprised by the football there. He'll still get inside the 20 for a short game. Mitchell getting rid of it quickly. He better get rid of it quickly. He better get rid of it quickly. A little dump to, to Davis. And Mitchell seems to have settled in since the injury. I mean, it looks so devastating early. If you miss this, this looked it looked very ugly. We thought potentially it was a, not only a leg injury, maybe an ankle. It was actually he had to go into the locker room, came back out, was stitched. And he's come back and been able to, how many have six or seven stitches, Aaron said? Yeah. Been able to come back out and put that injury behind him, wrapped up, ready to go, and he's starting to settle in here for South Carolina. Third and seven. This drive has been all about throwing the football. Eight passes, only two running plays. Of course, the key play was the run by the punter, Ryan Suckup, avoiding the pressure. Timeout, now on the field. South Carolina in scoring position again, but it's third and long for Spurrier. Eastern time. Mitchell under center now. Third and seven, and Corey Boyd is the back. Big play for the Bulldog defense. Can they force another field goal attempt? Don't want to get down double figures in this game. Sidney Rice is at the top, and a good cushion there. Rice in the end zone. Mitchell looks for him. Goes into traffic. Touchdown! Rice took it away from two Bulldog defenders. And you see the raw talent we've been talking about. Chris Sidney Rice, 6'4", able to go up and over the Mississippi State defense. Sidney Rice, a great high school basketball player. And in this case, this is his strength, going up in traffic, being physical, being able to time his jump perfect, and then high point the ball, just simply taking that ball away from Chambers and a couple other Mississippi State defenders. Nice play. That's why Sidney Rice, great illustration of why he's one of the best receivers in the country, not only the SEC. You can see the very late signal. There's a coach's challenge for Mississippi State. The previous play is under further review. So Sylvester Kroom, you have to call the timeout. There's no red flag tossed on the field. He calls a timeout. They review it. If the play stands as called, it'll cost him a timeout, but obviously it's such a crucial moment. And let's take a, another look. That's what they're doing in the replay booth right now. Initially, he has his hands on the ball when he comes down. Where's the ball? <laughs> Did it ever touch the ground? Because he was reaching down. Was the ball sitting on his leg? It was sitting, on, it was sitting between his legs. He takes the ball away, then the ball comes loose as he goes down. Matter of did it touch the? Yep, that's great, great decision, great decision by Sylvester Croom. He's going to win this call if they if they have a chance to look at that. Sylvester Croom is going to force fourth down for South Carolina. Great call. He only get one of them, and he potentially made the most of it. That ball hit the ground. You can see the official was blocked off of the play. It was sure the was. body of Chambers. He couldn't see where the football was. Quick thinking by Rice to collect it and hold it up and show it, but technology may have intervened. <laughs> <laughs> he had me fooled. I mean, it was. I was so amazed that he was able to go up there in the traffic. Two defenders tries to pull it away, but right there, the ball comes loose. Right Boom, hits the ground. It is on the ground right there, and uh, as you said, Sidney Rice sold it. Because right there, the ball is uh, kind of squeezed between some legs, but it had touched the ground. I think that's how we see it in this booth. <laughs> You're taking some time, though. They are taking. That's usually a good sign if you're looking to have it overturned. 
means they're getting a, a good look at a number of angles. What a moment in this game. Either Spurrier's well, team's going to be up 10 nothing, double figures with a defense that's just been dominant, or it's going to be a, a field goal attempt, and Kroom's bunch is still within a score. You can see that you get the one challenge per team per game. And as you said, this would be a well-used one. They're reviewing all these plays, and of course, three play official can intervene and order a well, review. Well, the other thing to remember here is that the third mark is if if he wins this call, if Mississippi State is right, and they reverse this, he saves his timeout, sure. which could come in very, very, very big here later in the second half. But the two possession game is the biggest issue. After review, it was determined that the ball did hit the ground. Yep. It was incomplete. We've seen the clock affect this game, and now we've seen a head coach make a decision to call the timeout, bring it to the official's attention that he feels that he wants to have a chance to reverse the call. The ball, in fact, hits the ground, and Sylvester Kroom makes the call, and Sidney Rice says, oh, my gosh, I thought I sold him. And that tangle of limbs in there, the ball did squeeze free and hit the ground, and by far the biggest cheer of the night is for the replay booth, <laughs> overturning the touchdown catch by Rice and sending out Ryan Suckup for a field goal attempt of 35 yards. Made the first field goal of his career earlier in this game. Made the big play on this drive as the punter to prolong it and connects there from 35 yards. So it's not the seven Spurrier thought he had, but instead a 6-0 lead. One more look and thank goodness for this rule. Neither team here thinking about any kind of championship game. They'd just like to get out of Starkville with a W to open the season. Redshirt freshman quarterback and a true freshman tailback for the Bulldogs. Gets the call here. This is Anthony Dixon reversing field and getting out across the 34-yard line. This is the guy that is projected as a future star. They've kept him kind of under wraps. Haven't talked much about him to the media, but within the football family here, Strong belief in this guy's ability. Chris, look at the vision there by this freshman. Outstanding job. That's just instincts. Play was designed to go off to the right, bounces it back to the left. And South Carolina that time, because of the red shirt freshman and because of the way they've dominated the line of scrimmage right now, they're putting a lot of people up the line of scrimmage, begging Rutland to throw. Thornton spelling Dixon now. He gets the handoff and he finds some room on the right side and rips off about nine as finally that Bulldog offensive line begins to create some creases in the Gamecock defense. Let's go down to Aaron. Well, Chris, I don't think there was anyone that yelled louder than Michael Hennig when that touchdown call was reversed. He actually stood up on this bench and started cheering. Remember, this has been the face of Mississippi State over the summer workouts. He was out there leading the guys on. He came over and he told me that he went up to Trey Rutland and he said, hey, do you have any questions? Do you need any help? Trey said no. What trainers did tell Michael was pretty interesting. They said, if you want to get that quick on the field, they said we may be interested in putting a plate in that shoulder since it's his non-throwing arm, guys. Wow. Already planning his rehab. Meanwhile, they handed it off to Thornton on the little fake reverse in the Gamecock defense. Not fooled as Cody Wells flowed that way for the tackle. They lose seven yards. Chris, I was just about to brag on Mississippi State in the offensive line, and they're, boy, they're starting to come off the ball here and trying to push back against South Carolina. And just as I said that, there's penetration, and they're pushed back into the, into the backfield. The offensive line's pushed right back into the backfield that time. Just black jerseys everywhere for South Carolina. They go from second and one to now third and eight. I'm not sure about that reverse call on second and one. Lance Long in motion behind Rutland, who rolls to his right. Flips it over and completes it to Long for a first down. He found some space along that sideline. 12-yard gain. Long with a knack for getting open. 
He's that Michigan native who came down here after initially going to Toledo. Not a speedster, but a good sense of how to get open. Chris, I like Rutland. Watch Rutland lefty here. Just flip it. Flips the ball out there. And his man, Lance Long, right where he needs to be, gets his foot down. Great conversion. Did, did we just see a Mississippi State conversion on third and long? That's a great job rolling him away from that pressure. Long in motion again, they hand it to Dixon. And this time, they cannot contain that defensive front. Jasper Brinkley, the middle linebacker in filling. Counting on him this year, and Brinkley's had a strong game. Dixon's had runs of 15, 12, and 14 yards in his career debut night. Chris, you're exactly right. We've talked so much about Culberson, middle linebacker from Mississippi State. 52 in the black jersey, Jasper Brinkley for South Carolina has been all over the field for the, for the Gamecocks. Very active. He wears number 52 for Ray Lewis. Firing the long once again. Diving near the marker. Doesn't have first down yardage, but Marvin Sack, the linebacker, to jump on him. His fourth catch of the night long. Lance. He kind of slipped down the depth chart, Kirk. People have talked about other guys yeah. emerging as playmakers, and don't forget about Long. Well, when we talked with Woody McCorvey, and we started to go through his lineup, we said, all right, let's talk about the receivers. We didn't we didn't bring up any names. He said, Lance Long. And we were like, huh? What about Keon Humphreys? What about Omar Connor? He went straight to Lance Long. They love his attitude. He's been up, able to catch some, some big passes tonight. On third down, they hand it up the middle, and nowhere to run. Stuff is Dixon. He'll lose yardage. They tried the power play on third and short. And he got pushed back. Once again, Brinkley, the last man held up in there. Jasper Brinkley, also great penetration by that South Carolina defensive line. Nathan Pepper in there, Marquis Hall. No gamble here. They send out the punter McAdams to try to pin the game back to the way, way too early to gamble. Try to push South Carolina back. See if your defense can get the ball back for you with a three and out. Adams hangs it up very high. Fair catch called for at the 10-yard line. He's done pretty well in his career. Keeping the ball inside the 20. 35-yard punt does the job. Now we'll see if the Bulldog defense can do it. <laughs> Excited to see the SEC against the Pac-10 in some big games this weekend. Worst starting field position of the night for South Carolina. It's a noisy section down there with a lot of the students in the bleachers behind the Gamecock offense and a flag before the snap. Before the snap, false start, number 77 on the offense, five-yard penalty, it will be first down. Well, the bad field position just got worth as Jamon Meredith is called for the five-yard penalty. Now, in the SEC, this is usually where the crowd can start to become a factor. And the cowbells, too. Cowbells are a factor. This Mississippi State defense has played with tremendous heart tonight. They need a little bit of help. They need that 12th man to try to give them, maybe create that turnover, try to do something to help them out. They went to Savell Newton. Savell Newton was in the backfield, takes the ball, and does nothing as a little wrinkle doesn't fool the Mississippi State defense. But if you've had the entire offseason to get ready for Steve Spurrier, you know that one of the things you might see is Sabell Newton, a former quarterback, getting in there and instead of lining up at receiver, lining up, taking a direct snap. They were ready for it. Ellis Johnson, the defensive coordinator, had Mississippi State ready for it. But interesting time to call that. Pin back at your own five-yard line. Yeah, Savelle's excited to get a carry, but he's saying, Coach, don't do me like that. Deep in this end here. And same thing. Savelle Newton's going to take a snap again. Now Mitchell, the quarterback, is lined up to the far right. They'll call a timeout. Mitchell had come out and was lined up in the receiver position as Newton slid up under center. Two plays in a row, which makes you think they had Flag. something crazy cooked up. There was a timeout on South Carolina before the 25 second clock expired. Well, timeout burn. They're down to one now. 
ESPN Full Circle brings you the big ball game on Monday night from the Orange Bowl, Florida State and Miami. ESPN will have it. ESPN 2 has close-ups of Coach Bowden, quarterbacks, and more. ESPNU and ESPN 360 will have Skycam, plus commentary from Colin Coward, ESPN Full Circle, FSU and Miami. We've got a one-hour pregame show from the field down there. You looking forward to that? I'll, I picked Miami to win the national championship, so we'll see if uh, the Canes are ready to go. It's always fun to see Miami and Florida State early in the year. We're talking about tonight's game, the speed that we're seeing. Wait till we see Monday night. Talk about all of a sudden you go from scrimmaging one another to stepping out in the field with all that, that, that defensive speed. Last year, it was a mess. They've been the games a lot like this. The last yeah. few years, the offenses have done nothing in that game. Nine sacks by the Knowles against Miami. But the Seminoles have really struggled on offense the last few years against the Canes. And there'll be some noise down there and some enthusiasm. Get things rolling on Labor Day night from Miami. So let's see what wrinkles, if any, Spurrier has left on third and a mile from terrible field position, projecting a six-point lead. A second and 16, excuse me. They lost six on first down. Come out in the same formation. Forced to call a timeout. It looks like Mitchell's going to be back under center this time. Mitchell needs to be very careful here. You think? Mississippi State's going to just rush three. Unless they blitz, they're going to they're gonna bring a little bit of pressure on the linebacker, try to get to him. Back off. They only rush three this time, and he dumps it off short. Still on his feet and fighting for extra yardage there. Boyd, the catch, and he fits you. The physical safety wrestling him down. So that's one of the few times I've only rushed three all night. Rush three, dropped eight. You're right. It's always been a blitz or it's been a four or five man, some kind of stun up front. This time because probably second long ball is so far back in their own territory, electing to just drop eight. And let's see if Mississippi State can try to get South Carolina off the field and get some good field position. Or maybe Blake Mitchell can convert here. Sidney Rice will be at the top of the screen, all the way at the top. His go-to receiver. Once again, they flip it off short to Boyd. He's got some blockers fighting toward the marker. Doesn't appear to quite have first down yardage at the 20. They play it safe. Flip it to Boyd, and he was fighting like heck to get up near that yellow line. Didn't get it, and the Gamecocks will have to punt. Interesting call there, and he, some great blocks downfield to give Boyd a chance. Boyd has uh, Boyd coming back after sitting out last year. When he's had his hands on the ball tonight, you can tell he almost looks like a, a bird that's been contained in a cage. He wants to get out to show what he can do. Nice job by Anthony Littlejohn, the linebacker pressed in the starting duty tonight with the pinch nerve for Gabe O'Neill, and it comes Ryan Suckup. Remember what happened last time he pointed they got pressure. And this time he rolls to his right, kind of the rugby punt, kicks it on the run and is very successful as Connor couldn't get over there and it rolls dead at the 32. 48 yards on the running rugby punt from Suckup. What a night this guy's had. Suckup's the MVP tonight yeah. for South Carolina. He's done everything. With a name like that, you better be good. A couple of field goals, they had you play. Look at this. <laughs> he, sh he, sh he has shown a lot of versatility tonight with his, not only the field goal kicking and the different style of punts, but very rarely you see a guy who can do both the rugby style kick and the regular regular punt and be successful. He's averaged 50 yards on his punts, made both his field goal attempts. His Dixon, the freshman, pushes forward for a nice game. Across the 45. Glimpses of a big future perhaps tonight. Well, Dixon is running hard, but he also finally is starting to get some help up front. They're getting a little bit of a push. If you can give a big back like this just a little bit of room to run and he gets to that next level, he has the size at 6'1", 235 pounds to build up some momentum. He can run through those linebackers and the safeties. Nice job helping him out up front by the Mississippi State offensive line. And the fullback, Bryson Davis, who's just a blocker in this offense, doing a nice block as well. 65 yards now for Dixon. And it's him again. Tough running across midfield.
There's Davis, the fullback for Coach Kroom. Beginning to show sparks of life on this Bulldog offense. We were headed to the fourth quarter. Second down. Six nothing for the Gamecocks. Sixty-five yards rushing through three quarters for Anthony Dixon. They haven't found the end zone yet. They may have found a star tailback. A lot of guys near the line of scrimmage. No gain. See why this guy's drawn raves on the practice field. Tough to run into a nine-man front. Chris, here's a great decision with instincts. Cutting back, plays designed to the right. Here's where he needs to still grow as a young freshman. Instead of bouncing this on third and short to the outside for a first down, runs right up the middle, doesn't see the hole to the outside. And Shane Beamer, who's the son, of course, of Frank Beamer at Virginia Tech, doing a great job in talking to Sylvester Kroom with that young freshman and helping him develop. Usually young freshman backs aren't very good in pass protection. And that's what's allowed him to get in so much action tonight. And now it's the redshirt freshman quarterback, Rutland, trying to convert on third down, rolling near the yardage marker at the 45 of South Carolina. Appears to be about a yard short. Sapp was over there, the linebacker. Second cousin to Warren. Marvin Sapp, the sophomore. Now a decision. Once again for Kroon, who's been in this position before, chose to punt and pin him deep. Got the ball back in good field position. This is the fourth time in Gamecock territory. So far, no points, and right now the quarterbacks are on the field. They're going to go for it. you, you got to believe they're going to either go with the sneak or go with the young freshman. They've got to be able to push up front. South Carolina's going to try to get low and push that offensive line back. It's Dixon. And he had nowhere to run, hesitated, will lose yardage. And a deflating change of possession as once again that Gamecock defensive Tyrone Nix comes up here. Coach Nix lost it. Tyrone Nix, new defensive coordinator for Steve Spurrier. Watch the exchange between Rutland, boom, right there in his young back, Anthony Dixon. One's a redshirt freshman, one's a true freshman. He bumped him just enough to, I think, get him off track a little bit, but let's not forget to give this South Carolina defense a lot of credit on fourth and short. They got lower, they wanted it more. They have 10 new starters starting this game tonight on defense, and look at that shutout for Tyrone Nix. Great job by this Gamecock defense. In the middle of his guys like Nathan Pepper, Marky e. Hall, and then Jasper Brinkley, the middle linebacker there to fill. So the Gamecocks take over with great field position. It's Mitchell, a backwards pass to Silvell. Newton will throw downfield and wide open. Here's Derek Pegues. It's Corey Boyd, excuse me, wide open. A little trickeration from Spurrier. And the deflating touchdown by the Gamecocks. 54 yards as Silvell Newton, the receiver, who used to play quarterback, shows the arm, and Boyd was wide open. You knew eventually Steve Spurrier would go to this. You have in the in the backfield, just going to have Boyd slip out and act like he's going to block. Here is Newton right here. Watch Newton just come back. He's very comfortable. Top of the screen. He gets lost. Boyd gets lost because he showed as if he was just going to come in to pick up a block off the man coming off the edge. Once he got lost, he was down the field all by himself. A very easy throw. Steve Spurrier always with a few tricks up his sleeve. They were lined up to go for two. Spurrier frustrated as they ran out of time there. So the trick play and the touchdown by Corey Boyd. Welcome back. He's waited 22 months for this football game. Big moment for him. Well, the Bulldogs some work to do after the trick play. Produces a touchdown for South Carolina. Gamecocks going for two at 12-0. Boyd, who scored the touchdown, lining up next to Mitchell in the shotgun. Mitchell pump fakes, throws in the end zone, incomplete, broken up by Keith Fitzhugh. He was looking for Kenny McKinley. 
Chris, let's go back to the play again. Here's Boyd. Here is Newton. And the ball is just going to come out to Newton. I want you to watch how Boyd does a nice job of selling this right here. Once he shows a block here on Brown, he's able to slide down, and then you have Newton who's going to get the ball down the field for a touchdown. Interesting here, the way he just gets lost. This is something they obviously weren't able to prepare for, maybe hadn't seen much on film, or they just got lulled to sleep, and that time Steve Spurrier was able to take advantage of it. And Again, an easy throw, but a nice throw by Newton for the touchdown. November 2004, the last game that Corey Boyd played. Sat out all of last year with the suspension. And Aaron, it's been a very tough spring for Boyd as well. It certainly has. You mentioned that suspension. He said during that whole time in 2005 when he sat out, he actually thought about transferring to Rutgers. But it was his mother who insisted that he stay put and try to make his way through it. Unfortunately, you mentioned the springtime in May. He received a phone call that his mother, in fact, did pass away. He thought about transferring again, guys, but he had thought to himself, you know what, I'm going to stick it out for her, and I'm showing everyone that I can do this. You know, he had to have been thinking about his mother when he had scored that touchdown. He hasn't been able to sleep. He's been anticipating this game so much. Missed football, played on the scout team while he was suspended, and said he enjoyed that too. He just wanted to be around the football team, but nothing like getting out there you know, prime time and scoring a, a crucial touchdown in the game. He's a young man, Chris, that in 2004 was an integral part of South Carolina's offense, and when Steve Spurrier came in, but Spurrier didn't have him at his disposal because of that suspension, and now he has come back. You put him and Mike Davis in the same backfield, and that is a nice one-two punch. Short kickoff goes out of bounds. And he'll set up Mississippi State. Pretty good field position here and in desperate need of an off score from an offense that hasn't been able to produce anything so far. Jeff Tedford's offense heads to Rocky Top, 5.30 Eastern time for Cal and Tennessee, the only matchup on Saturday of two ranked teams. And then USC against Arkansas. 28 points in their first eight plays a year ago in the Coliseum. The Hogs have been waiting for their chance at redemption. We'll see if John David Booty's ready to go, but the Cal-Tennessee game I think is really exciting to see. The hype of Cal. Jeff Tedford will bring in a team with immense talent, especially Marshawn Lynch, Robert Jordan, Deshaun Jackson. And we'll see if Tennessee's tired of being kicked around in the offseason, see if they're ready to show some pride. They see Rutland in the first play of a crucial drive for the Bulldogs. Flips it out there, and Lance Long makes the catch. Can we get Lynch and Jackson on this Bulldog offense right now? Is it possible to do that? Get some weapons down there? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's possible. Now, I mean, when it was a one-possession game, Mississippi State still in a position where they could run the big freshman, run the back, and still control what you want to do. Now that it's a two-possession game, Chris, and the clock is, I mean, we're here in the fourth quarter, they can still run the ball, but they also have to become a little bit more eager to throw the football downfield as the red shirt freshman, Trey Rutten. A lot more urgency all of a sudden. And it's Rutland on the bootleg, looking and finding no one open. In fact, the receiver there wasn't even turned around looking. Desmond Sherrod, the tight end, and Cody Wells on the coverage. Let's go to Reese Davis for a 30 and 30 update. All right, Chris, Terrell Owens took the field for the first time in the preseason. This is Terrell when he was getting ready to take the field, but yes, Minnesota got a standing ovation and then caught a six-yard out for his first reception in the preseason. And David Wells, a little bit closer to first place, got traded from the Red Sox to the Padres for a player to be named and cash. Sports Center coming up after the game, ESPN News all the time. You can also get mobile ESPN alerts. Okay, Reese, thank you. Third and six here in Mississippi State. And we'll talk about it. Down by two scores. This is a very important conversion. Redshirt freshman forced into duty tonight. Trey Rutland because of the injury to Michael Hennig now faces a third and six with his team down 12-0. the middle, has room, has a first down into South Carolina territory. That's 
what he's known for. If the first option isn't there, he'll take off and run quickly, and he's got good speed. 12-yard gain. Big conversion. Well, Chris, this is what he has to do. Look at the linebackers clearing out. They're picking up the backs. It leaves a big alley for him to be able to go in and pick up valuable yardage. And on third down, a huge play and kind of his comfort zone there. This young man has a, a very, very strong arm, but when things break down, he has the wheels to make a defense pay. That time, a big one there for the Bulldogs. Does have the one interception tonight. Flips it out, drops. Trying to get it to the fullback, Brandon Hart. Here's Fred Bennett. Let's talk about him being the best pro prospect among the upperclassmen on the field. Number three rated corner in some of the early draft reports. And the only returning starter for this South Carolina defense. The only returning starter. Could be a potential first rounder. He's worked hard to become more physical. Chris, but you just can't say enough about Tyrone Nix's effort in his first game as a defensive coordinator tonight. And what Fred Bennett and the rest of his ten new peers have been able to do so far in this game. Brooklyn back, some pressure, flips it downfield, ill-advised throw, intercepted, and there is Bennett, and he's got speed, and room, and he's still going up near midfield, so Fred Bennett, that senior, the trash-talking leader of this defense, flamboyant guy, 31 yards on the return. Chris, this is part of the growing pains of having to having to play a redshirt freshman quarterback before he's ready. He wants Omar Connor. Ball needs to be thrown to the inside. There's not a safety in there in the middle. For some reason, rolling out, he throws the ball late, number one, and then he throws the ball to the outside of Omar Connor, making it very easy for Fred Bennett to step in front of and make the interception. Bennett. I guess in the in the spirit of talented corners these days, uh, something of a flamboyant character as Boyd muscles up the middle. He wore an electric blue suit to the SEC media day. Styling, Bennett. Styling, and between the two backs, that, or the two uh, the corners that they have, Fred Bennett, of course, has the experience. I didn't realize he's pulling the suit out, Chris, to the SEC media day. And he brought the suit out. Remember, Coe Simpson and Jonathan Joseph both left this secondary in the NFL, and Bennett is the next one to head that direction yep. after this season. Imagine if they had Coe Simpson on this defense and Jonathan Joseph. <laughs> but the guys that are in there tonight, the they guys that are in there tonight, they have five true freshmen on this defense participating and playing well. And we'll try to shoot clock now, and it's Boyd bouncing it for a first down inside the 30, inside the 25-yard line before David Hurd finally wrestles him down. And you can see the effect that the turnover and the long trick play touchdown have had on this mid-Bulldog defense, which has been stout all night. But Right now they're a step wait. slow, but yeah. I, I got to believe that if you're Steve Spurrier, and people really they criticized Steve Spurrier last year because of the lack of a running game, you got to look now at Mike Davidson, of course, Corey Boyd being back in this lineup, a young man who can catch the football out of the backfield and also shows some speed and acceleration for his size. Makes it a little easier to call plays when you can get the running game going. Here comes Davis. This time it is Davis. Boyd has been great tight lift, not talked about the reason for that university-imposed suspension. He did have to sit out the entire season. His return has been good, as has Seville Newton, the man who threw that touchdown pass. He missed half the season with an injury as well, missed spring practice. The Achilles rupture, but he's 100% now as well. So a, a very nice homecoming for both Boyd and for Newton. Different reasons they were out, but yeah, glad they got him back. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, and, and the South Carolina offense, as we'll see them this year grow, if they're able to stay healthy, you have a, a quarterback now in his second year as a starter in Steve Spurrier's system. You've got skill in the backfield. You've got receivers that can make the plays. It's going to come down to how the offensive line holds up to determine how good they can really be. Boyd back in and on second and 11. They hand it to him. They continue to chew clock now inside of 10 minutes to play. Two score margin for the game cost. Seems like we always debate can Steve Spurrier win the SEC? Can he win in the East? Can he win an SEC title? You think so? I think he can. I don't necessarily think he can this year, but he thinks he can this year. And what a what a way to start it off for him. If he can win here on the road. 
SEC game, there's a victory. Goes back home in game, his second game to play Georgia at home in Columbia. First two games, both in the SEC. That's a good way to get off to a good start if you can win those two games. Mitchell on third and long is pressured and sacked. Well, Mitchell feeling the backside pressure as the backup end. Avery Hannibal, some fresh legs on defense, forces the eight-yard loss. And suck up will come out now for a field goal attempt. The next four games for South Carolina at home. You mentioned the Georgia game. Auburn goes in there on a Thursday night and will have yep. huge implications for the Tigers as well as for South Carolina. They will not be able to compete in the SEC if they cannot get any better up front. When they go up against the big boys, they've got to be more consistent up front. And suck up is three for three tonight. This one from 47 yards. He's the field goal kicker. He's the putter. He's made a big play. On a first down run, and South Carolina's in command up 15-0. Rewarded, not a Spurrier-like offensive performance. This looks a little bit like some of the uglier wins they had in the second half last year, but there are no ugly SEC road wins, that's for sure. Again, Spurrier told us he really didn't know about this defense. The stats were not very impressive last year. All the newcomers, is a big focus for him in the summer. The big focus was three and out. Getting, getting the ball back into his hands, and Tyrone Nix evidently took that to heart because tonight, Mississippi State only 4 of 12 on third downs. South Carolina has dominated on that side of the ball. This is Pegues handling the kickoff, spinning through tackles and getting out across the 40-yard line. Aaron, I, I guess some of those questions, some of them, may have been answered for Spurrier tonight about his defense. Yeah, because, you know, Kirk mentioned Tyrone Nix and how he wanted it, the motto to be free and out. Well, the reason why, of course, was that 2005 Independence Bowl. Tyrone Nix saying that was the most frustrated he's ever been in his career. Of course, as Missouri kept hammering away at USC's lead. From then on out, Nix vowed to erase the disappointment the following season. Guys, good start tonight. And Aaron, let's remind people of his days at Southern Miss with Jeff Bauer and what a great job he did there as a defensive coordinator. Rutland fires across the middle. It's Omar Connor with the catch inside the 45-yard line. 18-yard gain as Mississippi State acting with urgency now. No huddle attack. Stoney Woodson, the free safety, on the stop. Tyrone's trying to get his defense right. Of course, you remember his brother, Derek Nix, who has some health issues and is, is recovering very nicely and actually coaching now at Southern Miss himself. So you know, Tyrone has been there for his brother and helped him out, helped him recover. So Derek's watching him tonight. Nick's not counting this a win just yet, although the pressure drops Rutland. Busting through is Eric Norwood, and we've talked about the impact true freshman in this game. He's another one. He says freakish athletic ability was the description of the Gamecock coaches. Well, true freshmen on this defense have been all over the field. It's pretty easy to get in there when yeah. you don't get blocked, but they're confused. The Mississippi State offensive line... They're confused by Tyrone Nix's scheme and what he's doing. They're showing a blitz to fall back. See how they're moving around? They're constantly bringing pressure. And oh, this time he's hit in the mouth. The ball is fumbled. Bulldogs do recover. They've already lost one quarterback with a broken collarbone, and the backup just got clocked as Marvin Sapp came flying in there. Wow. They are up for blood at this point, protecting a 15 nothing lead. Chris, we just talked about the way they're moving in, moving out, bringing pressure. They're pretty confident right now. And I'll tell you, Marvin Sapp, the strength, the combination of strength and his speed we've seen tonight. I'm just impressed by the fact they're breaking in 10 new starters. And tonight, we see a defensive plan with a lot of mental toughness. They're physical, and they're playing hard, which is what they want to see. Third and 37 after consecutive negative plays. Just running around in desperation as Rutland who flips it incomplete. And there's Marvin Sapp who just made the big hit, dropping back in coverage and close to an interception. This is what you call blood in the water. Mm, yeah. A little bit of blood in the water right now. 
the two Game big Cox losses that it's back to 147 total yards for an offense that believed it was really going to be improved. Not tonight against this defense. Oh. Adams on the punt again, and Penny McKinley deep for the Gamecocks. McKinley, they throw a little gap there and gets out near the 40-yard line. Well, they'll face a lot better offenses pretty soon in this league, but what a start for 10 newcomers in that Gamecock defense. Almost took the Bulldogs down in Athens last year, did the Gamecocks. Our Applebee's weekend menu. See what Eric Ainge can do as Tennessee quarterback. The old, new offensive coordinator, David Cutcliffe, is back as Tedford brings the Bears in. Night game on ESPN. Game day will be at... Notre Dame and Georgia Tech as Kirk jumps in. I think he's doing every game this year, but he'll be jumping in with Mark Davey, Brent Musburger, and the ABC primetime game. Knowles and the Canes, and Monday will be there, too. Can't wait. Can't wait. Busy weekend opening up. You call that one, too, on Monday night. <laughs> <laughs> this is Corey Boyd as Spurrier goes back to the clock-chewing mode. A lot of the Mississippi State faithful are heading for the exits here. And, you know, this is the risk you take when you have a conference game in the opener. It's a very, you know, deflating moment. Potentially, you could pick, pick up a big win. But when you don't get the win and you get shut out, at least so far, and your offense has been awful for the last couple of years, Kroom said, Kirk, the last two years have really been a test of faith for him. His religious faith, his faith in himself as a coach. But he really had such an upbeat, positive feeling, a gut feeling, he said, this would be a much better year year starting tonight it hasn't been tough way to get started when your starting quarterback goes down in the first half with an injury but even when he was in there they weren't having a lot of success and this is an offense in Mississippi State that last year was 113th in the nation in total offense and scoring offense 113th in the nation and you look at tonight so far they have 148 yards of total offense tonight keep in mind tough in that first game, not only to lose your quarterback, but to go up against the defense in the SEC that's moving around and playing so well. Chrome, if he can't pull off the big comeback, we'll drop to 6 and 17. He's very secure here. He, a very important hire, obviously, historically, but the program was not in good shape when he took over. Hit by probation. Finally, this year, the beginning to kind of get back to the full scholarship limits of the teams they compete against. He believes he's got some depth and talent, doing well recruiting, but it's one thing to build a foundation and, and have progress off the field. He's very Good hungry ball. to see results the on the field. Game. On the offense, five-yard penalty, still third down. I think the first two years, Chris, he spent as much time just trying to teach his team about responsibility and doing mm -hmm. doing things not only right on the football field, but in the classroom and in the community. So just teaching them about the, the things that it takes, the little things that it takes just to improve as a, as a man, a young man. And then now this third year, I think they're expecting to see results. It's Savelle Newton, a quarterback for the Gamecocks, taking a direct snap again, the ex-quarterback. Diverted to receiver, but the man who threw the touchdown pass tonight to Boyd in the double pass. We've talked so much tonight, Chris, about how Corey Boyd is back and, and what he can do, but let's talk about Savelle Newton for a second. He is a, a guy that I think can be an integral part of this offense because of a lot like Antoine Randall in the NFL. He's a former quarterback, and he can do so many different things. He had, a, he had a, an Achilles injury last year that he had. You know, he's, you imagine trying to overcome that and trying to come back. He looks like he, tonight he's about 90% or so, not quite 100% yet. But uh, the Achilles, when a guy that relies on being elusive and quick, you, you have a surgery and you have an injury to the Achilles, and you have to overcome that. That's tough to do. But if he can stay healthy, he could be a very, very important part of Steve Spurrier's offense. Not to mention a position switch after the Coke yeah. that. Yeah, Quarterback yeah, moved to receiver. A lot of guys will pack it in and not have a good attitude. He certainly has. And a lot like Omar Conner. He's had to go back and forth from quarterback to receiver. He said, I can still throw the football. That was a nice look and touchdown pass to a wide open Boyd, but Newton put it on the mark.
Let's go to Aaron Andrews. Guys, we're going to switch gears for a minute and head back over to Mississippi State sideline. An injury update to tell you about. Thankfully for the Bulldogs, it's not a player. You're looking at Mississippi State's president, who was named over the summer, Dr. Robert Fogelson. Now, this guy, he's got all the support in the world for Sylvester Kroom so much. He goes out and works out with the team. He went through summer conditioning. He even ran with the linemen, and that's actually how he tore the tendon in his foot because he was doing conditioning drills with the football team. So this guy Come wants on. to... I, hey, huh? I'm just telling it like it is. Oh, my gosh. Let's say he's for real, too. It was no little token workout. He was out there regularly. He's got the maroon cast, the maroon socks. Four-star general guy. Wow. He means business. He's a gamer. He's a gamer. Let me get that cast off and see if you can help the boys out here again. Get out there running with them again. Another good solid punt from Ryan Suckup. Sets up Mississippi State at the 22-yard line. I like to get the bulldog paw. He's in the spirit here. He is. Love to see that. Now we'll have to bounce back very quickly here in Starkville because the old Auburn Tigers are, I think, the, the favorites to win the SEC come in here next time. Mm. Pass deflected at the line of scrimmage and incomplete. Let's go to Reese Davis for an update in the studio. Reese. All right, Chris, look at what's happening at Jack Price Stadium tonight. Toledo and Iowa State, this is a two-point conversion play, and Toledo converts Clint Cochran to John Allen to tie the game at 23, getting pretty deep in the fourth quarter there, kicking down for two minutes as Toledo out of the MAC trying to pull the upset. They are the Lumberjacks, and they're still okay. Northern Arizona tied with Arizona State. Well, well, well. It's Eric Butler, the excellent tight end for the Bulldogs. They say he has an NFL future. Good speed. 21-yard gain. This Kroom's team is in desperation here. How about Toledo going, going to yeah. Ames there? And I, they have big hopes at Iowa State. A lot of people think that they're one of the co-favorites, at least, in the Big 12 North. Well, how about the other school? What's going on with North, Northern Arizona? The second quarter there, Arizona State. So much being talked about. Rudy Carpenter now. Taking over for Sam Keller after Keller transfers to Nebraska. A little early there. I know, it's early, but I, I wonder if that has a little lingering effect there on the Sun Devils. Rutland throws deep as they send about three receivers deep in that one side of the field, including Butler, the tight end. That was intended for Keon Humphreys, but Stoney Woodson, the free safety, was there. Early in this game, it, it, it was as you would expect. A lot of emotion, a lot of energy, a lot of nerves, but both quarterbacks pounded on Michael Hennig, broken collarbone on this play right here as 300 pound defensive lineman comes right on top of him. And then Blake Mitchell, actually, his injury was first, and we thought it might be an ankle. Laceration, he had seven stitches. He came, he's come back to play and helped South Carolina find their rhythm much more and settled in to make some big plays for this offense. And a miscommunication there. Omar Kana was out there deep. Rutland throwing the outside route for Mitchell. Survives that scare. Seems to be okay. And he'll look toward the Georgia Bulldogs for Hennig. A very, very tough situation. He's going to have to watch his backup, apparently, play against Auburn. He's from Montgomery right there near Auburn, grew up an Auburn fan, was very, very excited to play against the Tigers coming in here. And wishing the best for a speedy recovery. On third down, Rutland once again pressured, and one more sack is Marquis Hall, the big guy that you saw crush Henning earlier. Once again, tackle for loss, and Jasper Brinkley has had a big game in linebacker. Fifth sack for the Gamecocks. Defensive line not letting up. They want the shutout. You know Tyrone Nix wants to shut out tonight. And the way they play tonight, they deserve it. Mississippi State has got to go back to the drawing board with a young redshirt freshman and Trey Rutland before they get ready for Auburn. That'll be a good drawing board. Yep. Keeping a safe distance from that punt. It's Kenny McKinley, and it'll roll dead down inside the 15-yard line. 
kick rolls out of bounds on the 14 yard line. Coming up on Sports Center, John Bouchagras, Stuart Scott will get you caught up on the world of sports. Irish done in September? No question mark? No. Who wrote that? Corso? Buckeyes' big weakness when we know they have a bunch of newcomers on defense as we begin to point toward that visit to Austin. And T.O. plays for the Cowboys finally. Is he out there? He's out there, I think. He's off the bike. Mm. You see him in that He'll help Tour de France to Discovery team jersey. And sense of humor there is his bike in France. It's been, it's been good. It's been pretty positive, I think, so far. <laughs> You're working out down there? <laughs> Just as you forecast. As, as, as soon as he has his first game and he makes eight catches, 150 yards, couple scores, the bike will be forgotten. But what's been forgotten has been a bad finish for South Carolina a year ago. Yeah, this isn't the kind of offensive performance. Dead ball, delay of game, number 12 on the offense, five-yard penalty, it's first down. Steve would have hoped for. They had three field goals and a touchdown. As he chucks, not the visor, but the headset <laughs> power supply down there. Chris, this is the great thing about having the first game, getting a win, working out the kinks, and getting ready to get back out to the practice field before you play Georgia. An area that they have to prove, improve on is the execution, getting a play called, and getting out onto the field. Three times, that's caught up to them tonight. Delay again. Again, no such thing as a bad road win in the SEC, but right. this is the kind of situation where, you know, one staff room, the defense is ecstatic. The other side, you know, Spurrier's offense knows it has a lot of work to do still. There were some a lot of situations like that last season for the Gamecocks. Well, yeah, you're right about that, but I, I got to believe as, as frustrated as he's going to be when he goes back and looks at the film of the offense, especially the offense, of line. He's going to peek his head into Tyrone Nix's office and be pretty excited about the effort that not only this defense played, but the intensity and the effort that they demonstrated tonight. This is Boyd. Oh, what a night for him. He's waited forever. Corey Boyd, the big touchdown catch. And now against a dispirited Bulldog defense, rumbles for 28 yards. 28-yard game. Well, this is a different-looking offense right now, and I know you know, it's a different Mississippi State defense, different effort we're seeing right now as the clock winds down, but just seeing Corey Boyd get on track tonight, you combine that with, the, with Blake Mitchell throwing the football around to Sidney Rice and McKinley and Murdoch. This has the makings of a, a very good offense. Again, I go back to it, if they can get help from the big guys up front. Wood has run for 93, caught passes for 67 yards and a touchdown. Victory formation for South Carolina. Blake Mitchell, the ball carrier. And a Wrangler five-star player of the game, Ryan Suckup. Hadn't kicked a field goal in his career. Three for three tonight, very solid. Excellent punting. Don't and forget, that heady play that kept the drive going. The whole reason he's, he is the Wrangler five-star player of the game is because there was a... The, what was, was the score six to nothing at that point? Yeah. Was, you know, they lined up for a punt. Mississippi State had a jailbreak there in there to block it. He pulls it down and picks up a big first down and allowed South Carolina to go down the field and pick up some more points. This is this is why he's the player of the game. Game still on the line. You imagine if they block that? If he decides to kick that and Mississippi State blocks it, it's a different game. He pulled it down and ran for a first down. He doesn't even know he's the Wrangler five-star no, player. He has no idea. His first first time and the last time punter. ever. And Steve Spurrier now for the 16th time in 17 years as a college coach has won his opener in the 14th straight time. So <laughs> South Carolina pitches a shutout on the road and gets off to a great start in the SEC. Mississippi State back to the drawing board. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. For Aaron Kirk, our entire crew, so long from Starkville Sports Center, up right now.